start recording. All right, so here we are I'm working on the Kubernetes learning again tonight. And um, this is uh, an ongoing problem. So first thing you need to know if you're watching this, this is not a tutorial. This is a long drawn out me learning stuff thing. If you don't want to sit back and do something else or while I'm working, then probably go someplace else. Uh, just please don't complain about the long video. <laughs> I'm just asking. So we reworked uh, the overview last time. Again, this was originally based on Hightower's Hightower docket, but we're Docker thing, but we're not going to do it. Uh, we're basically doing it all in Docker, kind of the same way Kind and Minikube work. Um, just a second. Uh, all right, so... Let me go down here and make this thing. So stage one, create a single node. So this is this is what we want to do. We're going to do it all in a single a single node for, for now, and then we'll go do the second page. So I've been doing all the steps. Create a single node with control, to a control plane and a worker. So it'll also be running on Ubuntu. We started, uh, went ahead and started a container with Ubuntu, just plain old Ubuntu Focal. And uh, that's the latest. Um, so we're going to keep that. Uh, make sure you can connect to it. We did that. You'll need to turn it, turn this into more of an actual host later on. We're going to do that. Uh, app upgrade, update. Um, yeah, and uh, we need to get Vim, Tiny, and Curl, and GNU GPG to be able to do stuff. And we're going to be installing the three main components of the of a of a node, uh, the container engine. We're going to use Docker for that. Kubelet, Kube proxy, and we've and let's see, we got pretty far down the list. I'm going to turn Steam off. I don't know why Steam is even on. Just give me a sec here. All right. I have to exit exit this program. Exit. I guess that doesn't exit permanently anyway. So let's see. We need to get to the public key Docker. Okay. Yeah. We had to. So this is. We actually installed the Docker uh, package archive. From scratch and I wrote it out about how to do that and we're gonna be have to do that again but I wanted to make sure people understand what's up there you actually don't even need arch equal 64 if you don't want um, you need to sign though and then we went into and just did another update and installed uh, the docker C is actually all you have to install you don't have to install the rest of that will come with it you take your new docker for command name and take test on a version um yeah uh so yeah when you do this you get an error that says you can't use it so then you have to mount the socket and then we do that uh and this when you do this so you're going to throw away all your changes and we have to do them over again so you just go back up to the steps and repeat them which doesn't take very long but you have to do it unless you're going to make your own image and so that has the volume mounted for the docker sock and then you can see from the aspect that it's bound. Uh, all right. And next, as a Docker is now installed on the kubelet. Um, now, now installed uh, on the node on the kubelet. Okay. So, so yeah. I don't think I told you you had to go reconnect to it. Uh, let's see. Uh, update. I can update the repository in cache. Yeah, this is all on the on the on the remote on the host. Okay. So uh, now you can see inspect single. Then it gets mounted uh -huh. uh, under the keyboard. Uh Let's uh, reattach. So. We have to do the same thing as before. Let's, I guess, uh, log in uh, to our node again. So to log in, normally this would be SSH. It's probably just put a little thing here. Um, chat. Uh, consider that the login step would normally be done with SSH 
uh, we use uh, Docker exec IT instead. But it's the same. So just so people know. Um, so I have to get back on the node. And again, we have to, we, I mean, we can just, we can actually look up the, actually no, we know the name. So I don't need to even put that. We can just do Docker, Docker connect, Docker, uh, not run exec IT. Uh, we named it single so we can do single and just call bash. So let's try that. Actually, I think we have one running. I might have cleaned them up, but let's see. Yep, we still have to keep running. Let's let's kill that so it doesn't confuse us. Make stats from the Jupyter Hub project. Make stop. Minikube runs inside of Docker as well. By default, by default, it doesn't use the virtual machine anymore. A lot of people don't know that. They still think it uses the virtual machine. By default, it doesn't. It uses Docker, just like kind. So, so what we got? Uh, Docker PS. Simple bash. So, so we got the stupid ass name. Um, uh, as a problem. As a problem. What happened to my other image? Is it not? Is it not running right now? My other container is not started. I don't know. Let's see. I want to stop that one though. I, yeah, I missed a step here. Yeah, I did. I did. I probably should just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. So that, that, I thought I was going to do single. So anyway, I, has that been running? Yeah, that stuff's, that's been up for five hours. Okay. So that's an old one. We don't want that one. So, or do we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 We don't want this because it's got eighty-eight. This is the this is part of the the J Hub project too. Okay. So, um, D. Stop stoic. Uh, DRM stoic. Okay. DPS. It should be now clean now. We should probably clear everything. What is that? D prune system prune. Um, I don't know if we should do a full system print or not. Because I have some, some images I need to start back up. So let's take a look. Because uh, I already did the install and I'm everything. Uh, I made some containers that might be stopped. DPS-A. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is, this is is the hard part of it. So I'm doing two kinds of work on here at the same time. Uh I, don't, I think I might have cleared everything out. Yeah. So. Loving Tesla. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the. I'm gonna go ahead and 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 clear Docker. Which is good because it's gonna catch me up on all the steps I have to do to to get Docker running again. And I need to do those steps a lot. So uh, I'm going to do those things again. I mean, it's going to be redundant for everybody else, but I don't care. I need to do it. So I have a, a thing to clear my Docker. Um, no, we need to do... Um, let's see. What is it? Yes. We want... And what is it? D... I forgot what I called it. I called it. Maybe I maybe I didn't. Oh, Docker Clean, yeah. Docker Clean does no, that's not it. That's just gonna get them all. Um I need to remember these commands anyway. So what is it? Docker prune? Docker system prune. Uh this will remove I'll stop containers, all networks not used by one container, all dangling images, all dangling build cache, yes. Yep. So that's pretty much it. All right. Um, yes, this shouldn't be anything here. Okay, so we're nice and clean again. Yep. And then, uh, 
we should have an image called single still. Let's check D images. Yep, there it is. Uh, I need to, I'm going to delete the other one. Um, uh, D RMI Bork. We don't need Bork. And I guess K base I can keep. Ah, you know what? I can keep it. It's fine. So simple as the one that was running. We're going to start a new one. So uh, the simple image does not have all the new stuff on it, I don't think. I don't think we made a new, or did we? Did we? Maybe we did. I don't know. Let me check. Uh, so go on, last thing. So if we go into images, images, no, single. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't done this yet, but we need to, though. Um, but, but I, but I don't want to, I don't want to get too crazy with it yet because we got to, there's lots of stuff we have to do, but I want to do these things one at a time. Um, we, yeah, I really want to go through this, this because this is the practice of what we'd have to install in here. And this, this whole file is going to have to change because I already know it's been simplified. So, um, let's, let's go ahead and follow the directions again. So, we're going to we're going to stick with this instead of the docker file for now. Um on uh, a keyboard. So see it should have already been running. Um uh, No, I think I needed to do name single on that. No, 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 no. I could just do single. Yeah. Yep. Yep, we need to get one another one going now that we kill them all running. So so what do we do? We do we're gonna have to do the whole thing over. Go to the beginning of the thing and see if I can follow it on my own. So we need to we need to start up another single named single. Uh so I should be able to remember that Docker uh, ITD to make it a daemon. Uh dash we want the host to be single and we want the name to be single and we want the image to be one to no the image to be single single and we need to mount a volume yep so yep and then we need to mount the volume so that should be uh var run docker dot sock to var run docker dot sock and that should do it what did I miss? I think single has to be last. Yep. All right. So, oh, run the. There we go. Denied access request to. Let's see. Pull pull access denied for single repository. Does not exist or may require Docker login. Uh. Cannot find single latest locally. I gotta swear we just had simple. What is in simple? Simple is a different image. Oh right, we have to we have to do the Ubuntu image. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. This is a good reminder. Uh, I need to do this like 10 more times. Single, name single V. I'm going to just do plain old Ubuntu. So we're just taking a plain Ubuntu focal, making it through your computer. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but this is much easier. This is less than 3 gig. <laughs> um, so we're we're making uh, uh, the same thing as mini and kind. So we're not... We're not crossing the streams any more than they have in the past, so I feel better about that. Actually, we can turn to them if we need to get help. Make sure you can connect to it. Yep. Okay. So, so now we have a thing. So I can do, I can do, uh, Docker exec. Yeah, this is the same as SSH basically. Um, into single bash. So now we're on the system. Now we have to do our normal things. 
up, update upgrade which it's like no you're the latest so it doesn't anything uh OVI. so app upgrade update and we're gonna go ahead and update everything uh we're gonna go ahead and we need let's see what i'm trying to remember what we need we need curl we need gnu pg and to do the 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 the, the setup for docker install yeah, I mean, the, the first major task when you set up a new node is to put a container engine on it. So that's what we're going to do. And to do that, we need to do all the thing. We need to get GPG and stuff. So we're going to need curl for sure. And we need something to edit with. So, so let's do that. So apt install uh, dash Y. And then we're going to get... Um, you do use just an app get if you put in Docker file, by the way. Um, we're going to get vimtiny, uh, curl, and gnu pg. And we'll put those on. On our new, our new machine, so to speak. Uh-huh. And then, so now we're ready to do the install. Um, yeah, we need to do the container engine first. So let's go grab it. Um, I'm going to try to remember where it is. I think it's download.docker.com, Linux, Ubuntu, GPG. Okay. I'm going to try to memorize these commands. Uh, curl.ssl, because we really don't want it to make noise. Uh, we'll put it into temp. Yep. We're going to call it temp.docker.pub, because it is a public key. And we're going to grab it from HTTPS. Uh, is it download.docker? Yeah download.docker.com Linux Ubuntu and we're going to get the one for our operating system so we can do LSB and all that but we don't have it I don't want to blow up the container so I happen to know it's focal so we will do focal stable and that should pull down cannot resolve focal stable oh wait whoops I'm doing the wrong thing Ubuntu uh, slash gpg. All right, so there's our gpg, and we need to dearmor that. So gpg uh, dearmor that gets rid of it, the ASCII the ASCII protection. So right now the file is is ASCII armored, and that's new talk for this. You can go, you can send it an email or a signature or something. But we're gonna undo that. So the way to do that is gpg dearmor. And that's going to actually take it off and it's going to put it in the top directory with the rest of the stuff. So now we have this file, which is binary, uh, file temp docker pub.gpg. There's no file command. What? All right. Well, so, so then what we have, so now we have that now, now, now we can add an entry to our source list. And to do the right thing, we should actually add it to, wait, what's going on here? Oh, here we go. So to do the right thing, we should, well, we have to get the, the GPG. This is a weird way of naming it. I don't know why they call it this, uh, Docker Archive Keyring, but I'm going to follow that convention anyway. It's not a keyring. It's a stinking private key. It's like one key. It's not a keyring. So I don't know why they call it that, but they do. So docker pub.gpg goes into user share key rings, Ubuntu, and you got all these other key rings. Um, I just, I don't get into uh, removed keys, archive removed keys. Uh, key ring, .gpg, key ring. So we're just going to call it docker dash archive. I key ring that GPG, even though I fucking hate that same. It doesn't make any sense. It's just one key. GPG. All right. And that should be enough to get us to get us uh, to be able to install and, and with the app and everything. All right. So now we just need to add a list that points to the repo the repo. And that you can just do in Etsy sources. Um and this is this is a Debian way to do it. 
uh, was it Etsy app source list. You can just edit this file if you want, or you can do it in the .d. I really don't care, so I'm just going to put it here because uh, I want to do this fast. But I do need to tell it what key to use. I think. What would be cool is if it actually did the right thing and used the right key. But I don't think it does. I don't think it does. I think you have to tell it you want the key. So, and I can't tell you the configuration format for that. I honestly don't know. So you have to do sign by. Yeah, that's what you have to do. This right here. Um, so that's what gets crazy. Local stable. All right. So we're going to put that in here. And then what? Then we have HTTPS colon slash slash download dot docker dot com. This is cool. If you want to set up your own uh, PPA, you can do it without messing with Ubuntu. Mm. and canonical so we're going to do stalker docker.com slash uh, linux slash ubuntu and we want focal stable all right now if that worked we we won't have broken anything if i do apt if i do app search docker I should get it. Okay, so we do apt update to update our key rings. I mean, to update the archive cache. And now we can actually install Docker. So you can do apt install docker ce. That's all you need to do. Contrary to the documents, that's all you have to do because all the other things are dependencies of that. The ce cli and container.d are both packages that get included automatically. So the docs are wrong on that. Um, and that's going to get us everything we need. Uh, I should put a note here. Uh, the docs are definitely wrong on that one. Yep. <laughs> I wonder if I can get away without the HTTPS. I think I can. Yep. Warning. All right. Make your Docker command for a spin and test it out. So, oh yeah, I have to do this stupid thing. I don't know why we have to do this, but we do. In America, I'm, I don't know. I guess I'm in Martinique. Is Martinique, no, Martinique's not America. Oh, time zone. No, our, where's, uh, this is taking forever. Where's Toronto? New York. Okay, 105. I said 105. Thank you. 105. All right, there we go. So Docker's getting installed. And now we have Docker version. And it worked because we mounted the volume. See, there's no hidden volume, right? So I can do Docker PS and you'll see I can see myself. This is the this is the the one in the root image. Okay, then note there, Bruce has got that. We fix that, and now you can do the inspect. We did that already. So Doctor C installed. You can come back and see this. How's that Docker's on there? Okay, so we're caught up again. Um, okay. If you haven't already done so, uh, log into our node again. Okay. It's a uh, exec dash single bash. Yeah. All right. 
And now what? We have to do the cubelet. And I don't remember how to install the cubelet, so we're going to have to go look up how to do that. Um, I don't I don't remember how. So it's not hard. It's in my Docker file, but I don't know if I want to cheat and use that. I'm going to go check. So yeah, and there's actually this is a, there's another script you can do to run to install Docker if you don't want to do all the other stuff. This does this does all of the stuff we just did from the yeah. Try to run mirrored. Get some of the mirrors. Yeah. It takes care of all that stuff we were just talking about. Hmm. There we go. No, we don't want else to be released. Okay. So, um, we got talker on there. So if we were building a machine, what else would we do? The next thing would be to put the cubelet on there. So we need to do that. And that's this. And apparently Kubernetes has its own package as well. Um, so we are going to use that. And we're going to do the same steps that we did for the other stuff. Um, to, to add this, this is exactly the same steps as the other thing for adding a source. So let's do that. And then we can install Kubelet, Kubeadm, and Kubectl all in one shot and then mark them off. All right, so I want to get good at doing this because this is the Debian style of doing it. It's not canonicalized. Um, so we do need to know the key ring name. And um, this is interesting because it does... You know, what I, you know what I find interesting about this? Is it this does not de-armor it. Yeah. I think it's because if you get the key.gpg version, it's still encrypted. Yeah, that's why. This is still encrypted, so we don't have to do the de-armoring. That's why. So in this particular case, we can just copy it straight down. That makes sense. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm wondering why that... I was wondering why that was a thing. So, so yeah. So we're going to do... What are we going to do here? Cube ADM... No, we're going to do curl dash uh, SSL. Well, actually, since we're doing this from here, we can just go there. So we want to go to the key rings. I'm memorizing these locations too. Share key rings. Uh, here we go. So we can actually grab that one uh, and just dump it right here. So curl dash dash SSL. Sort of quiet and redirect. HTTPS. Uh, what is it? Google. Let's see. Packages.cloud.google.com. Packages.cloud.google.com. Uh, app doc app key ring. App doc app key.gpg. .gpg. And that should pull it down. Cannot resolve host package packages. All right, so now we've got the key. Now it's easy. Yep. Wait, where to go? Um, I have no idea where to put it. Did it did it call it app key? I don't see it here. Do you? I don't see it. Maybe I need to do an O. And now I could just do yeah let's do dash o dash o that'll keep the same name there it is okay so so the, then what we like rename it let's rename it to whatever this is so I don't need to they matter that, no that it care that it matters but Kubernetes dash archive okay so we're gonna do that Kubernetes Kubernetes dash archive dash keyring 
I mean, it's, it's, it's cool to know how to do the packages. Mm-hmm. Not GPG. All right. So now it looks like everything else, and we just have to go into Etsy, apt, and mess with sources list, or add a D directory. We don't care on this, so I'm just going to come down here, and I'll just clone this one. And can you see Docker? I'll change that to Kubernetes. Uh-huh. And, and we're going to do the URL, which is, again, I think, oh, I didn't catch this. So Kubernetes actually has a shorter URL. That's interesting. Okay. So that has, yep, let's go look at that one. So that, that one is apt, app.kubernetes.io, uh, kubernetes.io. Uh huh. And then, uh, yep. And then, then, uh, Kubernetes Zenial. I don't know if that's the one we want. Um, main, I, the, the name is unique. So I think we probably want, uh, I don't know. Is there an Ubuntu focal? I don't know. We're going to find out though. I, I don't know. So, yep. All right. So let's try and see. So app update again. Yes, we can't find it. There's no such thing as full core release. I wonder if it's Kubernetes dash Xenial. Oh, we need to know the name of it. So Kubernetes dash focal. Let's try that. I'm just guessing. I'm gonna have to do Xenial. I yeah, I don't know what determines the names of these. So let's go open this. Dists. So apt uh let's see what distributions are listed. Oh my god, it's gonna be a lot of them, I guess. Wait. Oh wow. Okay. So it's it's. I see. Cause so it's everything. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we have to go grab the one that we want. That's why it's Kubernetes dash. Okay. So. Yeah. There we go. Kubernetes squeeze Jesse trusty. I must. Those must be Kubernetes names. They seem like they correspond to the Ubuntu Linux, though. Um, and to me, it looks like they don't actually have a focal. So Yakety, I think. Yeah, I think I think Xenial must be the must be two point That's what I think it is. See, this is good for me stuff for me to know. I'm really glad to know this. I'm guessing that that's that that's 2.0. What is Yakety? Let's try Yakety and see. Yeah, let's try this. This is good. This is good. This is good learning. Good learning right here. Okay, so Kubernetes Yakety. Um, Yakety. Yep. I'm gonna go update that, and that should go pull down all packages updated. Yay. And then what? Then we just do app install uh, cube ADM, cube CTL, and kubelet. That is it. That is it. Shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not as easy as I thought. Uh, install Y, cube ADM, CTL. That looks like it did not get everything. I wonder if it is my sources list entry. What's wrong with it? Signed by Kubernetes Kubernetes archive dash keyring dot gpg HTTPS. It would have it would have maybe that's the slash slash slasher. I do probably. I think I do have to put a slash. Kubernetes Yakety main. Is it main though, or is it stable? Uh huh. Let's do this. So Kubernetes 
Yakety. Which one's the more recent one, though? Oh, in release. Shit. Oh, look, we have main there. Main. Binary 64, AMD 64. I wonder if I have to provide that or if it's just going to grab it from my OS architecture. It should, right? Uh huh. So let's do apt update. Our package is up to date. Here we go. Watch. Uh, get three. Kubernetes Yakety in release. Hit. Of course, in release. Okay. So it should be able to. Why not? Why isn't it getting it? Kubernetes Zenial. I wonder if it if it that's the new one or something. That's the only thing I can figure. That's the only thing I can figure. So let's go back and mess with it. Let's do Kubernetes. Let's do Zenial. That's that's the only thing I can figure. It's gonna get a new one. Yeah, now it has it. That's cool. So Yakety didn't have all this stuff. I mean, Yakety must have been like a, a really early one. I, I don't wonder. I wonder how you know which one's the latest. Hmm. I gotta go figure this out right now. In another window. Uh, what do the Kubernetes? Um. Uh, release. What are the Kubernetes release names? What are the Kubernetes uh, apt package release names? I think I think they go with the version of Ubuntu. I think that's what it is. Uh huh. So Kubernetes package charmed makes it sense to use snaps. Oh shit! I don't want anything to. Um, no, the release name for the app repo for Docker packages. I went to the version of, wait, the version of the Kubernetes the OS packages to install. Is any, I, I'm pretty sure all those names are Ubuntu names. So I guess it must be going with it, but I'm on Focal now. So that must mean we're, we're installing an old version of, yeah, here we go. Uh, app get update error related to the step at Kubernetes Zenial and release fetched. Maybe they're they're following the same sort of naming convention. Kubernetes cluster with Ansible and a bunch of five minutes. Yeah, this is if with Ansible we could do all of this in one shot. We don't want to do that though. I want to do it the hard way. Kubernetes, this is text truly the hard way. So uh anyways, Kubernetes installation setup. Okay, configuration, yes. Uh I don't I don't I wanna find out. Why, what, what is with Xenial? So, what are the latest versions of Ubuntu? Either Ubuntu or Debian, one of the two. Um, what's a release cycle? Version number, Kubernetes, ooh, canonical Kubernetes release cycle. Yep. Uh, I wonder. One two one. All right, so tell us here. Oh, that's totally different. Totally different. We don't want that. Images containers. Extended packages, universal tools. No security packages, main. Hmm. And it's multiple kernel packages. HL test version of Ubuntu. A kernel guide built with that. Kernel version. Yeah, but I want the names. I don't want an open stack. Nope. Um oh well. Uh release is Ubuntu Wiki, yeah. It went to twelve point nine. So yeah, you come down here. Uh huh. I oh, gotta go away, 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 away. 
away. There we go. So 20.10 is injury, hippo, fossa, focal, fossa. So there's no zenial. See, there's zenial. I could have swore there was a zenial. There's a zenial and there's a trusty. And bionic and focal. So that, that means that the names of the Kubernetes releases are entirely different. They're not, they're related to similar, but they're not the same. All right, that's good. Uh, somebody thought they'd be cute by doing the same thing, and that's fucking me up. Um, that's all I can conclude on that. All right, so so we've got this. We've got Senial Kubernetes, Senial Main is the one to install. Um, and we got we got all that. Okay, so so so, so we need to do the update. We did that. We installed Kubernetes, 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 and CTL. Uh, we need to mark them so they don't get updated automatically. This I normally don't do this. Uh, this is something that I learned from this tutorial. This app mark will lock down the version so they don't ever get updated, and there's never a recommendation to update them. And that's important because you don't want you don't want the kubelet or the cube ADM to get out or kubectl to get out of sync if they're more than two versions out of sync. It just won't work. So uh, so we set the holds up on that. And we're good to go. I think we have a, a container that's working. Let me go check this there. Uh, yep. And so, so that then we need to do. I mean, I, we have to do all the other steps um, to to get. I'm actually going to do this the really really hard way. I'm going to have people instead of having to automate that. I'm going to say, okay, now go back in there and then put that all in a Docker file. Uh, I'm actually going to start that in the beginning of the tutorial. Uh, uh, they take a phased repetitive approach and complex and each repetition by starting with just the minimum at the minimum signal cluster. Um, uh, stage one, okay. Let's see. Uh, All right. Okay, I'm gonna, I gotta put some stuff in here so people know. I've got a different version of okay, yeah. So I wanna put a note here, I wanna say um, by hand, first by hand, right? Okay, uh, best, uh, the suggested a way to work through uh, these steps is is to do all the individual tasks uh, one at a time without scripting them at all. Um, uh, this includes typing out things like uh, Etsy app source uh, list.d entries by hand so that you can internalize uh, uh, what is in them. Uh, later, uh, you should go back and create your own Docker files for the images that optimize uh, the steps that you did by hand. After all, this is this is how Docker was designed to begin with. Okay, so 
I mean, because that way you, you get you really can internalize the different steps in the overlays. Um, uh, each uh, step is an overlay. Generates an overlay. Um, Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, create a single node to control the complainant worker. Uh, all right. So, um, the three, the three, uh, components of any node, Kubernetes node. Yep. The Kubernetes, the Kubelet, and the Kube proxy. Uh, this is the thing is I don't see where the Kube proxy got installed. Um, okay, so. These uh, logical components are fulfilled by the following um, packages. And we'll say uh, cube, okay, cube ADM, cube CTL, cube, uh, cube let. Um, and, uh, docker dash CE. Um, this is a piece that I really missed when I was learning this is that these packages ultimately fulfill all of this installation. Cube proxy comes with the kubelet. It's built into it. So you're not installing anything for the cube proxy, even though that's listed on the Kubernetes website, you know, and that that's not explicitly called out. So that was something that confused me quite a bit. So this is really the only thing you need to install in there. And then we're going to need to put the certificates. Uh, even though we'll be cheating. Yeah. I'm be cheating and using the Docker engine running on, 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 uh, on our workstation, uh, by, by mounting var run Docker socket, we, we still need the Docker command. There are many ways to get this, but let's use the official Docker package archive, um, Docker dash CE. We need to get the public key from uh, first. Uh, well, we'll install this. Uh, we'll see. We'll authorize uh, this PPA by by hand, uh, which is the same. We'll, um, we'll authorize this. Uh, package archive source by hand in a way that is compatible with Debian and Ubuntu first uh, we'll get 
First we get the, the public key from Docker. Let's get the public key from Docker. Um, now, I, it makes me wonder if Docker has a, a non... Uh, uh, which is which is only available as an ASCII armored text file. Okay. You have to know about that to get what that is. All right, so then we get that. Now we can convert uh, the text file into a binary uh, into a binary key uh, key file the armor uh, and uh, t uh, for apt to see this key, we need to add it to the key rings that the app command uses. So we should add it to user share key rings to uh, user share key rings. Uh, and we'll keep with the naming conventions used for other uh, key rings, even though this is really just a single key. Um, Here we go. Yeah. So. Yep. And uh, now we have. To, okay. Now we can add. Add the, the 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 package archive to our list of approved app sources. You can add the following directly to sources. Is. Uh, Normally, you should add a file uh, to the Etsy apt sources.list.d directory, uh, but We'll go ahead and just add it directly to Etsy sources for now. Normally you should add a dot list. Um, let's see, docker dot list file. Uh, but we'll go ahead and just add it directly to the source list for now. So, yep, okay. So, change the following to match our architecture release. Um, um, add the following line to Etsy apt sources dot list with add the following line to uh, add the following line. I guess that's fine. Um, Yep. All right. So 
Tib sources. Sign Dr. Shark hearing. Uh, uh, make sure focal and stable uh, match your release. Um, do, do, do. Um, when in doubt, you can open the web page at to get uh, information, to get hints about what is available. Um, I'm going to put a tip, a light bulb here. Uh, uh, using the direct uh, sources dot list, adding um, adding a adding a source list uh, directly in this way is 100% compatible with Debian as well as Ubuntu and saves you from the extra bloat and dependency on what is the PPA thing? Uh, apt add repo on apt add repo uh, uh, which is only supported on Ubuntu. So when in doubt use the Debian way. Um, it pays to know the Debian way of doing things. Okay. Um, to change the following to match. Okay, we did that. Um, you get the hits what's available. Uh, uh, the let's see. The PKG. I wasn't planning on writing a huge thing here, but I don't care. It's helping. Print architecture. Um, I can also help. This will be helpful when you say, go back and make your Docker file. Um, the file directly, oops, if it's over here. Uh, can use uh, directly or echo. And you have to know how to do that. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Okay, so all right. Good, good, good. Good, 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 good. Okay. How to update your app people cache and install doc the and install uh the Docker dash C E package for Docker Community Edition. Uh Docker C E. Okay, those are not required. What why did I put D on there? That was stupid. Um Okay. All right. Take, let's see, take your new Docker command out for spin, Docker version, not this error that the error produces. 
um, at the bottom. Okay, take around this error. We will need to exit, stop, and remove our and remove our container. Uh, creating a new one with a new run command uh, and the volume mount connecting the virus on this machine. Um, uh, this is a regular practice tool accessing the same Docker runtime engine from containers as the host containers. Uh, this will completely discard uh, all the work you've done so far. Um, and so you'll have to repeat all the previous steps, which is, prob which is probably best to practice them. Uh, uh, this is intentional. Uh, you need the practice. This try time, try to do them all without looking at your notes too much. Uh, uh, you did take notes, right? <laughs> if not, you're gonna learn an important lesson. <laughs> oh shit. I need you to have the oh shit moment. I do that people all the time. When I was mentoring, I used to run people in the wall, off the cliff all the time on purpose because I wanted him to have the pain of the, and that's like that first time you delete your paper in college. You've been working on it all night. You forgot to save it and make a backup and you delete it on accident. Everybody's done it and then you never do it again. <laughs> so you begin to create your own talker file. Um, and you can begin to create your own Docker file image uh with notes i start using that instead okay so let's see exit stops exit darker stops seeing all the rooms i mean this you could have done this i did i'm doing them individually uh and then we're going to run this big old monster command now you can now you can see from inspect out but the new volume has been bound yep after you have repeated all the steps to get Docker C installed, you can try Docker PS and should see uh, your host machine container running. Uh huh. Okay. Actually, we need to do now reconnect. All right. Two, three, zero. All right, so now let's see. Now log into your node again. Um, okay, wait. Consider that the login step would normally be done with this stage. Use Docker exec instead. I need to put that in the up here in the tutorial. It's a little bit better placed up here, right? So I can put this up here. Docker stage one run. There we go. Uh, I think I should have the login step I would normally done with SSH if this uh, node or a real machine instead uh, because uh, our our host is a container and not a machine. I mean it's redundant but a bit clearer there. All right I'm feeling good about this. Okay so Heading the source list, update, North Kubernetes, take care, let's see. 
Um, get around this error. We will stop exit. Okay. Exit. Boom. 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 Can see spec. Okay. Now log into your node again. Docker CS single bash. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, now log into your node again. And, uh, and, uh, test out Docker. And then, uh, Docker version, Docker PS. All right, so. After uh, your uh, test of Docker should now work. Keep in mind the output will look exactly like it did when you were not logged in because the docker inside the container is using exactly the same uh, docker as you installed on your workstation. Uh, this is intentional. Okay. So, okay, so, so, so we could do Docker version, Docker PS. Um, yep. Yep. And then, uh, I mean, Uh, one two Linux AMD. Get okay, commit. Is that is that it? Oh well. Docker Community Edition. Go one point sixteen. Hmm. I probably. I wonder if I could. I wonder if I could mount slash temp and get that out of there. That would be nice. Um. We could do that. We could actually make a way to transfer files back and forth without using SCP. Yeah, actually, no, you know what I can do? I can do. Yeah, I can. I know what I can do. Okay, so I can do this. I can do. Yeah, let's do. Your output should. Okay, so we could do docker, docker exec uh, single docker, docker version. And this other one could be docker ps. Yeah. I'm going to use a filter command and send that to bash. Yep, and that actually ran it on the remote host the remote container and then replaced it in my VI so I didn't have to do anything. Pretty damn cool, huh? Bash. Yep. So so cool. So cool. I love containers. Docker container on Docker. Yep. There you go, Z Chef Bunny. Exact them all. But we did it from VI. We didn't have to live leave it because VI. VI is so cool. Uh, so there we go. Um, let's allow Docker's now installed on the node. On to installing, uh, uh, the rest of the Kubernetes, Kubernetes stuff. Um, I'm going to make a, a note here. 
chat, I guess. Uh, note that the uh, Kubernetes IO site does not include the container runtime engine in uh, the diagram uh, describing the essential uh, components of a Kubernetes node. I just want to make a note of that. Um, uh, this is probably because um, the container engine uh, is technically not a part of Kubernetes itself, uh, but a primary dependency for Kubernetes. Um, in other words, uh, uh, you could always log into your node and just use Docker on it as if it were any other system with Docker installed. Uh, uh, in fact, even though it is uh, a very bad practice, um, uh, cloud native admins will sometimes uh, log in to log into a node machine and do exactly this uh to uh to troubleshoot uh or worse um or worse to to build images when they are too lazy to set them up on to set up uh too lazy to build them on their own workstations. This happens at work all the time. <laughs> it's seriously fucking insecure to do that. Uh, keep in mind anything that messes up these containers. Uh, keep in mind uh, doing this is very risky. since any mistake could uh, leave Kubernetes, could leave uh, Kubernetes and the kubelet in an un unusable state. Um, uh, uh, Anyway, so uh, this is also why hackers uh, target um, uh, target this uh, to gain access to the underlying system uh, having broken out of Kubernetes. Target uh, this fact broken out of Kubernetes. So gaining access to the host system unless this is actually the single greatest uh, attack plane, attack, whatever you want to call it, attack vector for
so don't fuck with it. <laughs> I mean, just don't. Don't fuck with it. Particularly if you end up putting a container in there that ends up showing up as a member of another pod or they get out of there. Uh, so... Probably depends on the other word. In other words, you could always, you know, to just use Docker on its own. So we need their system Docker installed. Um, in fact, it's very bad practice. Cloud-native admins will sometimes log into a node. Um, the log log into a node machine and do it and just to use docker um the troubleshoot or worse to build images and they're too lazy to build them on their own workstations keep in mind doing this is very risky since any mistake could leave kubernetes and kubewood and the kubewood uh in an unstable state uh, uh, this is also why hackers target hackers, hackers also target this, this fact about, uh, Docker, uh, usage, um, this fact about also talk us this um docker scope to to gain access to the underlying system have a broken out of, of Kubernetes getting access uh ha yeah like uh also hackers uh target this Docker scope issue to gain access to the underlying system by breaking out of Kubernetes gaining access to the host. Uh, um, which is why um, the Docker engine should never run as root. Uh, this is the single greatest attack vector against Kubernetes currently. Um, I guess target the, uh, Oops, um, the Docker scope issue to gain access to the underlying system by breaking out of Kubernetes uh, and gaining access to the to the underlying host system. This is the biggest attack vector. Uh, against Kubernetes. Uh-huh. And one of the main reasons uh, other container engines um, are preferred uh, that's not just it. I don't want that's too complicated an issue to talk about there because that's why Talos is going to be a thing too. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, enough rap, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we got Docker on there and I didn't, I did it, but I didn't write it up. Okay, so, yep, we're going to do.
Yeah. Did we do the archive for Kiri? We did already? Did we do that one already? Docker. Yeah, I guess we did. Oh, now we need to do the Kubernetes thing. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's check this. Here is the... Uh, okay, now we need to install, uh, the Kubernetes stuff. Uh, cube ADM, uh, cube CTL and cube let. Uh, we'll uh, use similar steps to uh, those to add uh, the docker apt repo to our source list. All right, so we already did these steps, so I just got to recreate them. Um, we we did what we we got into user source share key rings, right? Okay. Uh, change into the key. Uh, uh, this time we'll. Yeah. Uh, change into the, the keyrings directory. All right. So CD into user share keyrings. Okay. Now we can curl down the binary directly from, where is it from? It's from, uh, here we go, packages.google.cloud. Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, my cloud. Uh, uh, which is organized quite differently than, uh, Docker. So, Let's do that one. Let's go here and we're going to go get it. So we can just do curl dash SSL. Uh huh. And then what? We'll do. Let's see. Yep, this guy right here. Actually, Google cool Cloud. Yep. All right. Um, and we'll do dash O. The O like renames it. The dash O keeps the original name. And then we'll um, rename it. So move app dash key to whatever else it was. I don't remember. To this okay. So we can always script that later. 
All right. And then what? And then uh, we have a key ring. So, yep. Uh, now uh, for uh, the entry in Etsy app sources dot list. Um, add this however you want. Etsy sources. Oopsie, apt. Yep. Um, uh, uh, keep Kubernetes a Zenial for now. Um, I'm not quite sure on the naming conventions um uh but this is from the standard docs okay so there uh uh don't uh don't forget to apt update after this okay we did that already uh then you can uh install everything you need in one command All right, so we should be able to do app uh, apt update apt install kubeadm kubelet and kubectl. Mm hmm. And that catches us up. I know that was a lot of writing, but it's good for me to rewrite it because it helps me re re replay the steps in my head. So if I had to do this, I know what was going on. Um, and we have everything now. So we're actually up to the, the init phase uh, where we're going to run like init and stuff like that. And and I'm going to have to go back to the docs and check what the next step is. I'm pretty sure it's QB ADM init. Um, but I, I want to review on the docs. So I'm going to actually commit all this right here. So um, because I, I just makes me feel comfortable <laughs> so but yeah we have kubelet we have kubectl it's all all this stuff is here a uh, kubectl get pause it'll be like i can't see anything we just specify because we haven't started it we haven't started anything yet so that we're going to do that next all right um so yeah add dash a dot uh commit how's it going jay uh add all steps up to fully installed node components uh to um but not start them up all right so we're gonna do get push okay so to to everyone out there this is if you want to go get it, I just pushed all the code and all the instructions to this location. And you can actually follow along if you want to. You can open it up and you can read the readme and help me debug it if I miss something. If you want to, you can go out here and read it uh, and tell me I'm full of it or something. But this is the new tutorial that I've been making. So stage one, create the Docker, Docker thing. So here it is, it's Arvix Rob slash lab. I uh, actually think I put it in the chat already, but give our 
I'll give it to you right now. So that's uh, github.com slash rbxrob slash this. And if you go there, you'll see this. And you'll get the readme. This is the new version of my tutorial. Um, and we're just doing stage one for now, and then we'll come back and do stage two. And we're installing uh, the hard way from scratch uh, a, an entire Kubernetes cluster using nothing but Docker. So, and we're having uh, Docker containers simulate host containers, uh, hosts, uh, host machines. So, stage one, um, and it tells you what we do here, all the different steps. It's a single Docker consider here, apt upgrade, it takes you through it. So, these logical components are fulfilled by installing the following packages Docker C, Kubate, MCB, and Kubelet. Let's start with the container engine Docker. No would be cheating and using the Docker engine running on a workstation, blah, blah, blah. We still need to get the Docker command. And it talks about how to do it, how to dearmor it, um, and you know where to go if you want to go look for stuff, get hints. Uh, so I'm not assuming you know a lot about system administration here. I'm actually walking you through those steps too. Um, here's the error that you're going to get. And we'll go down here. And then we come, we do these steps here, here, here. So if, if you're trying to follow along with me, uh, install Docker. That's really all there is to it is if you have a Linux machine or a Mac or whatever, install Docker and follow along with these steps and you can do this. If you're using WSL2, you'll have to use WSL2 if you're going to do the mounting of the, of the volume, the way I'm doing it. Um, cause it's tricky. It, it, it doesn't, it uses a different syntax for PowerShell. So, but I suggest you do it from a Linux machine if you can. And then you get, you get all this stuff. Docker's is, Docker is now installed on the node. Uh, it does not include the container runtime engine in the diagram describing, um, the components of the node. This is probably because the container engine is technically not a part. I should actually make that link to the right thing. So let's do that. So, um, uh, I'm going to put, um, what is it? Um, node components. Uh, I'm going to make a link to that. Make a markdown link. Node components is from, go back to here. Uh, I'm going to go to Kubernetes. .io yeah and then we'll go to that's new I don't remember seeing this um yeah Kubernetes basics modules this is this is yeah I mean, they're working on it. They're doing good. They're working hard. I know. I, I slam them all the time, but they're they're working hard on it. Um, so I'm still trying to find the the con concepts. It looks like they. Ch this looks like oh, there we go. Review concepts. Cluster architecture. Uh, control plane communication nodes. Oh no! Where is our diagram? Where's the diagram go? This beautiful diagram. Where is it? Great components. Here we go. This is it right here. So this link will probably break, but that's the one I want. Um, uh, oh, wait. This is the wrong thing. Um, that's the wrong one. Uh, yeah, Kubernetes. Where is it? Where are you? There we go. All right. Yep, Kubernetes no components. Do not wrap. Yep, Kubernetes. How's it going? I'm good. I'm having a good day today. Actually, really good day. Node components. 
Um, yep, uh, I'm going to just commit that. Uh, add a link to node components docs. Mm -hmm. Git push. And if I refresh, not that, that can go away. That can go away. Um, where are you? There we go. So this is, should have a link now. Yep, okay. When I decide it's not, yeah, here we go. So this does not have a container runtime engine. It also doesn't have a queue proxy. It just, these are just logical things. And that can be confusing if you're just starting out. You're like, where is everything? Um, so yeah, QBDM, going to the key rings. We think where the following should go. Oh yeah, the steps. So we're done actually. So, um, I mean, we're done with this. Now, now we need to do the hard part. I mean, it's not the hard part, but we need to initialize etcd and the certificates and all that jazz. So all we've really done here is set up the node. That's it. And that's a big thing, but we got to do a lot more. So we'll go back to the Kubernetes. I'll get you started site. Um, uh, create a cluster. We're not going to use Minikube for any of this. We're going to do it the hard way. So um, I'm going to create a cluster. The production environment, best practice learning environment, learning environment, install tools, production environment, download Kubernetes, install tools, including CTL, Task tools, select container runtime for your cluster. We did that. We're not best practices for cluster setup. Control, force control paint to run on Linux. Yep, set up your cluster with Windows nodes. Hmm, didn't know you could do that. Uh, not interested. Uh, what, what the hard way get you versus Minikube? Minikube does everything for you. You like what run one command and it installs everything. <laughs> this is actually teaching me how to create certificates, how to do QBADM, how to set up etcd, how to, like, the stuff you would have to do to make your own hardware cluster, right? If you just want, if you just want a cluster to play around with and start practicing making applications, then Minikube or Kind is the way to go. But I'm moving on from that. I want to, I want to simulate all the steps of making a machine. So... So this, so so this here, this 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 endpoint right here is as it's the same thing as if I made a computer and I installed all the dependencies on it. Yeah, uh, mini, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yep. So, and and that's all saved now, so you can go follow that. Now I'm trying to figure. I don't know what the next step is. I think the next step is kubeadm init. Um but I don't know and I'm going to have to do some research now to get to that part. This, the, the way that I'm doing it is not commonly referred to because they just don't expect people to set up their own clusters. I wish they would, it's talking about the basics and stuff and Hello Minikube, but I don't want to do that. I want to do, how, how do I set up my machines using kubeadm? So I'm pretty sure if we search for kubeadm, we'll find it. At some place in here is creating a cluster with kubeadm there we go so this here installing Kubernetes with deployment tools bootstrapping clusters with kubeadm okay this this is it i gotta i gotta um i'm gonna put a list a link into this in the tutorial because because this is super important um this uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna put a reference to this too i say if i uh uh uh, uh, it also contains uh, correct corrected information from the official Kubernetes um, cube ADM uh, boot strap. What's it called? Creating a cluster with QVDM, Kubernetes, um, creating a cluster with QVDM from the official Kubernetes uh, 
instructions for why not working Kubernetes right uh, for creating a cluster with kubeadm yep it's left it, let's see this is is inspired by the popular tutorial from Kelsey Artar, uh, but without the cost, but without the Google Cloud Platform dependency. Well, Google Cloud Platform uh, hassle and dependency using Docker instead to create uh, what we call uh, host containers. Mm. Uh, this lab also contains, also draws heavily from the official Kubernetes instructions for collating a cluster for QVDM. In other words, it is more relevant and will get you certified faster. <laughs> so Uh, and, uh, does not, uh, let me see about that. All right. So, uh, if all host containers or just, uh, hosts, um, Those containers are easy and more flexible to set up than host machines virtual real, especially when just in a, a single document. This is fast, easy to get through and the core learning. Um, use the built-in networking that Docker provides to simulate bridge networks, even data centers. Um, this approach is not novel. Uh, or niche uh, in fact this is exactly what both kind and mini cube do uh, to implement yep Uh, just without the magic leaving leaving that to you to learn from uh, you'll just uh, do the same Uh, you'll just be doing you'll just be doing the magic uh, yourself and Okay. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Um all right, so 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 
other changes to steps. I'll keep this up here. This ASCII's armor is like this. Um, all right. I know I'm going slow here, but I want to make sure this is really well documented so I can do it again. Other people can do it. I don't want to waste my, I'm going to go through it. I might as well document it so others can try it. Um, we got QADM, Kubelet, and Kubelet. So what's next? Let's go back to our tutorial. Uh, the QADM tool is good if you need. Okay, so let's read all this. This is exciting. I'm actually excited. Shit, what time is it? Uh, people, uh, people. I mean, I'm going to save this and put it up. But I kind of want to keep my videos relatively short. Uh, using QADM, you can create minimal viable Kubernetes clusters that conform to your best practice. In fact, you can use QADM to set up a cluster that will pass uh, the Kubernetes performance test. So that's cool. We could probably do that. We could, it would be really cool if we ran the conformance tests on our server. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, we need to do that. I can't forget to do that. We can do that. To do, to do, uh, run the Kubernetes conformance uh, tests against our own cluster. I mean, that would be like over the top, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? I built this thing with Docker and it passes the Kubernetes conformance tests. Huzzah. That is, I, that's my new goal. It's like, I built a cluster from scratch. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, this is like, talk about test-driven development. We should probably go download those conformance tests right now and figure out what it does. Because we know that Minikube and Kind both fulfill the conformance tests, but I want to know how they run against it to see I mean, that'd be cool to set up. Oh, we got to do that. That That's going to be cool. Like, I'm super excited now. All right. So, I mean, uh, then you can flex on stream. Oh, yeah. It's like, hey, you want to see my, my cluster I built from scratch in Docker? They didn't cost me a dime nor any cloud time. In fact, you can do it on your laptop. <laughs> hey, some sidewalker. Welcome. So, QDM also spends other cluster lifestyle functions such as bootstrap tokens and cluster upgrades. Good night. If you have to go to bed, I understand. <laughs> good night. So, um, uh, the Kubernetes tool is good if you need uh, a simple way for you to try out Kubernetes, possibly for the first time. It's not a simple way. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's just, no. Uh, a way for existing users to automate setting, setting up a cluster and test their application. Yes. That's what we're doing. Uh, a building block in other ecosystems or or and or installer tools with a larger scope. Okay. You can install and use QBDM on various machines, your laptop, a set of cloud servers, a Raspberry Pi, or more. Whether you're deploying into the cloud or on-prem. Are you telling me there's a harder way than QBDM? Because <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Uh, in cloud or on-prem, you can integrate QBDM into provisioning systems such as Ansible or Terraform. Right. And that's most, 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 most people right now would be doing this whole entire thing in Ansible. And, and I told you this is a hard way. That means no Ansible, right? But if you want to take all these steps, put it into Docker image and Ansible, then go for it. But I want to document it by hand as if you did it literally the hard way. So before you begin to follow this guide, we need one or two machines with Deb or PM compatible Linux, which we did. Uh, Ubuntu and CentOS, 2 gig of RAM, at least two CPUs, full network connectivity. Uh, I think we're going to run into a problem with swap being enabled. Um, we, we ran into that initially, but you can turn it off. Uh, if we're going to, I think that's going to be a fun point. I'm going to have to ask more experienced people about that. I, I asked somebody, they said that swap was disabled. It's not required anymore. So, or turn disabled swap is no longer required. Um, but we still get the warning at QADM. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, you also need to have a version of QADM that, that can deploy the version of Kubernetes that you want to use in your new cluster, which we did. Kubernetes version and version SKU support policy. So QBDM has to be kind of in line with Kubernetes. That's what I was talking about uh, with the whole Xenial, Kubernetes Xenial thing, trying to get my head around what the naming convention is. Now the QBDM tool, uh, overall feature state is general availability. Uh, some sub features are still under active development. Uh, on RPI, you can actually. You absolutely can. People do all the time. You can definitely use QBDM on a Raspberry Pi. That's one of the main reasons they do it this way. Um, 
the implementation of creating uh, the cluster may change slightly. I somebody, the most experienced person that I know in Kubernetes land, told me three days ago that the requirement for no swap is now gone. One gig of RAM only. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, you're going to be really, really pushing it on one Raspberry Pi. Are you going to make it your controller and everything else? I mean, if I were you, I, this is using Docker, right? You have six pies. That's totally different. Okay, so this, you know what? Let, let me. This you're you're experiencing the same confusion I did when I read this. This doesn't tell you what, right? So each one of your Raspberry Pis is going to be a node. It's going to be it's going to be a worker nodes, right? And one of your Raspberry Pis is probably going to be your master node, maybe two. Now, the reason I'm doing this in staged approach, the first stage is going to make put everything, the worker node and the master and the control node, they don't call it master anymore. Um, the control node and the and the worker node are going to be on the same thing. That's what kind and minikube both do. Stage two will be to break it all up, and stage three will be to put it on hardware. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, Kubernetes version and version skew support policy applies to Kubernetes as well. It's okay, we got that. All right. Um, any commands that are Kubernetes? Okay. Objectives: install a single control plane Kubernetes cluster. Install a pod network on the cluster so that your pods can talk to each other. Yeah, so so you should be fine. Your your pies should be fine. They, they they're just gonna be nodes. Uh, they won't be able to do much, but they'll definitely be there. Installing Kubedm on your hosts. Uh, no, if you on your hosts. See, this is the thing. They don't ever tell you what they mean by this. This is the most annoying thing of all. It doesn't say it doesn't say how to regroup. Yeah, it's really confusing. It's like you just told us we were going to do it on a single control plane cluster. You haven't told me how many hosts to have. You said I only need one computer, and now you say on all of your hosts. And so it's it it's a non sequitur. This is the thing that really confused me when I first read it. Uh, about to I think this is the same thing actually. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. So you do need to install Kubedm, but it's not just Kubedm, by the way. You've got to do a lot more than that. So that's exactly my point. They don't tell you, right? So I happen to have learned the hard way that a host is a machine and each host is going to be a node. And ultimately those nodes can be worker nodes or control nodes or both. If they're both, and you can put all of that into a single machine, a single host. Now, for the sake of what I'm doing, each Docker container is a host container. In other words, it, it doubles as a machine. It's not a machine, but it doubles as a machine. And and that's how we get away from the, the hassles of using virtual machines or cloud or network or hardware or any of that stuff. We don't need any of it because we're just doing it all on a single host, a single host container. Um, and I mean, there are some some quirks there, but I've worked through those already, and that that stuff's already covered in the tutorial, in the work through lab, whatever you call it. So initializing control plane node, okay. So this is a single node. Uh, when you upgrade, the kubelet restarts every few seconds as it waits in the crash loop for QBM to tell what to do. The crash loop is expected and normal after you initialize your control plane. The kubelet runs normally. So I still haven't been able to figure out what gets started first. This is probably the most annoying thing of all. So it it would imply here that you want to install a kubelet and your you know your worker nodes would be the first things to get installed and they would have kubelet and everything installed on them and then you would start kubelet. Uh, that was what it would suggest and then you would then start your main your main control plane. But I don't think that that's the proper order. I think that what you should do is start up your control plane first and then then bring on your workers and join them in. But I haven't found any documentation to that effect at all. So it says installing this QBDM. We've already done this. Um, this page shows you how to install the QBDM toolbox uh, for information on how to do it. Do this. So so, so and that's like, okay, well, it says install QBDM. Okay. It, says, it gives you this whole thing about what you need to install on, right? And you're like, well, so QBDM has to run on a thing like this, right? 
verify the MAC address and all this stuff. I'm like, well, is this, what kind of thing is this? Is this, a, is this, is this all for, what kind of machine am I talking about here? Is this my control plane machine? Do I have to have QBDM on both? Um, so as far as I can tell, each node, is each node a host? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so a node, strictly speaking, as far as I can tell, according to the component documentation, a node is a machine, a host, that's running three things. It's running a container engine, it's running the kubelet software, and it's running a cube proxy. Now, the, the really crazy ass thing in this is that they don't, those are logical items. They're not exact packages. Probably the biggest breakthrough I've had so far doing this, uh, and I hope I'm not wrong on it, probably the biggest breakthrough I've had is that from all the documentation, this is the logical breakdown of the things that have to be on a node, right? But this is the exact packages that must be installed to fulfill this. And notice that they, I'm not installing QProxy. I was like, where's the fucking cube proxy package? I was really frustrated by that. I was like, oh, there isn't one. It's a logical component that's built into the kubelet when you install that kubelet package, as far as I can tell. And if I'm wrong and if somebody knows better, tell me. But it's confusing as fuck because it's like, it shows you in the Kubernetes documentation, all the stuff you're supposed to add. And then it doesn't say, well, what are the actual packages? And then, and then I've read two different documentations on the same site. Some, one of which that says you're supposed to have all of these packages installed on every single machine that's involved with Kubernetes. And I've had other ones say, you don't need all of that on every machine. You only need kubeadm on the control plane stuff. And I'm like, okay, which is it? Right. And, and then I was asking, okay, is there a difference between the control plane? Are the control plane hosts the same as the worker hosts? And the truth is, yes, they both have to have kubelet. Even if it's on the control plane, it still has to have kubelet as far as I know. And that means they have to install all of this. So, so let's, let's, let's run a scenario really quick. Um, this is for my own benefit as well. So let's say somebody gives you the task to make a cluster, right? And let's pretend that they have a bunch of machines. You know, and then and you got your engineers and they're asking you what to do. And you would say, okay, you need to make every one of these computers has got to have this on it. They have to have Docker C installed, kubeadm. I mean, you, this, this varies, right? You don't have to use Docker community edition. You could use Creo or Containerd if you want. But, and so what ends up happening is then your infrastructure team, it doesn't have to know anything about Kubernetes. And this is exactly what we have in our exam in our in our case. We have a we have an infrastructure run team run team that that doesn't know jack about Kubernetes other than what we tell them to install. Okay, and I think that that model is going to go away eventually. That they are going to have to know it. But and then they have they 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 provision hardware, and they give us hardware. They just did today. We just got a whole bunch of new notes for our infrastructure cluster, and. And they put on that an image, and if not an image, they put on you know a base operating system, in our case Red Hat, and then would, and then they have to install these things. Okay, now they they happen to have an Ansible image and all this other stuff for making this happen automatically. But at the end of the day, if they didn't have any clue, you would they would come to you and you'd say, okay, you need to put you need to put a Docker on there, you need to put kubeadm and kubectl and kubelet on there. And like, oh, all right, fine. And then they would put all that stuff on there, and now. Now you can imagine you have this pool of metal hosts on which you can organize however you want. And, it, and the first stage of my tutorial, we're pretending that you only have one host. They're just giving you one machine and you're putting all of the components of the worker node and the control node onto the same thing. In other words, both the control plane and all of its components, it's many, many components, and the three base components logical components uh, of a node are all going to go on there. So in other words, a, a, I'm going to say it, a control node is, has got a sort of, uh, you know, polymorphic inherited relationship with a base node. Does that make sense? So you have a base node, a base worker node has this stuff on it. Right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that someone's going to yell at me and say, well, you don't have to have that. I mean, but that, but logically it helps me think of it that way. So you start out with a node. It goes from being, it goes from being a, a machine to a Kubernetes node by installing this stuff. 
and once you and you got to do some other stuff too so you got to set up the certificates and everything but but that but that's the base idea so and as soon as you have that stuff now it's a node or at least it has the stuff of a node right and then you can take those nodes and you can elevate them even further and say okay you're not only are you a node a worker node but now you're a control node that means we got extra components we're going to put on you and and so that's why I'm kind of trying to build it up this way. I hope it works out this way. I, 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 I may be missing something, and that's why I'm doing this, because I want to hit those those things. So this is this is a little bit misleading, because it tells you everything you need to install kubeadm. It doesn't really specify where you would put kubeadm. It just says, if you're installing kubeadm, you need all this stuff. Certain points are open on your machine. See here, you must disable swap. We understand that that's no longer required. Um, this, this requirement I just heard two days ago is no longer required. It's just still in the docs. Uh, this is going to be a problem because I refuse to disable swap on my workstation. And I know that it's not required because Kind and Minikube both are certified Kubernetes conformant and they don't care if you have swap on. So this is a lie. <laughs> okay. I mean, they must be doing some magic to get around it because they've had it even before the apparent, you know, disabling of that. So we can definitely work around that for our, our, our container, but, but just know that you're going to hear a lot about that. Um, and, uh, because we're kind of cheating and using Docker containers for stuff, we, we, we're going to, we're going to ignore that swap requirement. So I should probably put that down there, but we're not, we don't, we don't have to, we don't have that yet. I verify the MAC address and protocol UID are unique for every node. Yeah, but we don't need to do this. So it seems like a lot. Check network adapters, let IP tables, see bridge traffic. Uh, this is actually a step I think we're going to have to do. And I really don't want to do this yet. I'm really, really hoping that I can skip this. I think that Docker is actually going to do this by itself. This is actually one of those places where I'm kind of frustrated because I think if you were to do this in an actual OS... And that's not a simulated container OS. You would still have to do this because you have to mess with IP tables. But I don't want to fuck around with them. I don't have to. I'm just using the network bridge from Docker. Um, and I, I don't I don't want to do this until I have to do this. Make sure that the VRNet filter module is loaded. This can be done by running blah. To explicitly call a mod pro VRNet filter. As a, as a requirement for your Linux nodes, IP tables to correctly see bridge tables, bridge traffic... You should ensure NetBridge, bridge NF call, IP tables is set to one of your config. This is, this is, I don't understand why this is. Please use the network plugin requirements page. Um, I imagine that this error right here, this, this thing is, I'm only going to be able to test this if I do it on true hardware, either in the cloud or in hardware. That's the only way that I could actually get this because Otherwise, I'm just using the network stack from Docker. And and that is, I don't know if that's cheating me from some learning that I need to know or not. That's I'm kind of concerned about that. Um, because I, yeah, check required ports. I mean, I'd hate to go through this whole thing and then, you know, be given a whole bunch of host cloud nodes and on the test, on the certification exam, and then not know that I have to turn on bridged IP, IP table stuff, right? Uh, I know that this exists now. I could go find it in the docs. You can use Kubernetes IO in the docs uh, if I needed to pull it up. But I, but I at least want to do it once uh, if I'm required to do this. And I want to understand what it is. I think this is just turning on bridge network traffic, and that's all it's doing, which is not a not a not a problem. Um, but I tell you what, networking is has been the single greatest pain in our side as a team since we started this Kubernetes project because. There's already a bunch of IP table stuff set up in the base infrastructure images for all of Unix in our in our organization. And the IP tables stuff has has, you know, I can't quite put my put words around it, but we had some ARP storms and stuff that really fucked up stuff and it was caused by Kubernetes. Because Kubernetes has got its own network routing and stuff that does things in much different time and expectation from what people would think with base IP tables. It starts to do stuff that, that, that nobody ever anticipated that that would be done. It, there's just a lot of software-related networking going on, and 
and it puts a strain on any existing system that's already done something fancy with networking in the base images and stuff. And that's what they had done here like years ago. So you have to have like a full blown, you can't even just, it's not even good enough to just have a network engineer. You have to have a network engineer who knows the deep bowels of Kubernetes to be able to do this. And this is, this has burned us more than once. And, and, and I, so I have worried about skipping this part right here because I feel like there's some learning going on here that I need to do. Um, but, I don't know. We're going to, we're going to continue on. We have all of those base pieces installed, by the way. So we have, this is where we are at right now in my little, you know, personal learning thing. So we are, we've got QBDM, QBCTL, Kubelet all installed. And we have um, Docker uh, Community Edition installed to fulfill that, which creates the fewest number of problems. Uh, I, why do I have the Kelsey's things there? Oh, that's that bio I was talking about. Yeah, that's a really good bio. Yeah, it's really good. It's a really good bio. You guys should go read it. I was talking about that earlier. Oh, wait, I need that one. Wait, there's my other documentation. That wasn't playing in the background, was it? I hope it wasn't. Have you been able to... Was there something playing in the background? Okay, um... All right, so, 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 we got this. No, 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 no. This is the hardware one. I don't, I fucking hate this thing. Sorry, no offense. I just hate it. Um, no, we're not doing that. All right, required ports installed on time. Um, communicate in order. All right, so, install runtime. So, install uh, to run containers in pods. Kubernetes uses a container runtime. This is not true anymore. It's it's var run docker dot So yeah, see container runtime for more information. It's not like QBM, Kubelet, and kubectl. Uh, QBM the commanded bootstrap the cluster. Kubelet the component that runs all on all of the machines in your cluster. This is probably the most important statement that is the hardest to find. Kubelet has to be on everything that if it has running etcd still has to have a kubelet on there um this does things like starting pods and containers uh it's the thing that actually runs docker calls it directly kubectl the command line to talk to your cluster so kubectl technically doesn't have to be installed on everything strictly speaking it doesn't have to be but but you're you're, you're inevitably you're going to land on uh, a node you're going to ssh into a node at some point, and you'd be like, fuck, I need to do a cube thing over here. And that's when having kubectl installed is, is good to have there. Um, even though kubectl is nothing but a lightweight client that talks over port uh, 5000 to the mothership control plane. So you really only need this on your station. But inevitably, you're going to want it on something because you're going to want to have it available. So strictly speaking, it doesn't have to be there. Um, strictly speaking, too, you don't need QADM there uh, to do the bootstrapping. We just happen to be using QADM to do our bootstrapping. Uh, Kubernetes itself doesn't require it, which is probably why the documentation is kind of all over the place. Uh, QADM will not install or manage Kubelet or kubectl for you. You will need to ensure that they match the version of Kubernetes control plane that you want QADM to install for you. If you do not, there's a risk of the version skewing. We talked about that. Which is, this is really too bad that this is a thing. I'm sure that's burned a lot of people because they mention it a lot. However, one major minor version of Google Kubelet is fine. Uh, so this is, this is, this, by the way, let, let's, let's just look at this really quick. This paragraph encapsulates the greatest single pain point in the Kubernetes world, as far as I'm concerned. Keeping the software on the machines up to date and in line with everything else. So if, you, if you're going to upgrade to like Kubernetes 1.22 and you have 1.20 in your control plane, what do you do? What gets upgraded first? Who does the upgrading, right? Are you doing, are you doing with an Ansel deployment or do you, are you going over there and you're doing, you know, up, apt update or whatever? One of the reasons that I actually chose to do the Debian uh, source list method in my tutorial is because that is something I can maintain going forward with new versions. So I just log into all my nodes and I can do app, app update, app update, app get. And I always, and I, 
I can unlock my, my, my versions and pull it down that way. This is a real big deal. This is why I think the future is going to be Kubernetes on metal because like Talos and Sidero, you know, Sidero, uh, that's the new name, S I D E R O. I talked to them today actually. Um, and I think it's the future because this is a pain in the ass. I mean, if you have 5,000 nodes and you need to upgrade the version of Kubernetes, you have to upgrade the kubelet on every fucking one of them. And if you decided to put kubectl on there too, you got to upgrade that too. How are you going to do it? You can't use Kubernetes to change this, this installed software on the machine. The whole reason that cluster API is becoming so popular is because it lets that happen. Cluster API, which just went 1.0 two weeks ago, October 6th, is hot right now, even though it's got a long way to go, because it allows you to update your supporting infrastructure for Kubernetes. Kubelet, KubeADM, KubeCTL, all of that stuff can be managed as if it were a Kubernetes resource. And as of this moment, you cannot manage that stuff with Kubernetes. That means you have to have an entire team and method, which they don't suggest. There's no, I can't find anything that suggests how the best way to do it. What is the best practice for updating like all 5,000? If you're, if you're going to do a Kubernetes upgrade, right? It says that, that, it, that it'll allow one skewed version, right? Now that's probably good because that means that you can, because if they didn't allow that, you'd have to stop the whole fucking thing and upgrade it all at the same time. It's sort of a single transaction and that ain't happening. So I think the reason that they've, they've designed this particular piece into the overall thing is so that you, I don't know, but I think the reason they did it is because they, they want to allow you to upgrade your entire control plane and then use that and then, and then go back and then go upgrade all of your new nodes and stuff, have them still work. And then one at a time, you know, pick off, run it, run some sort of automation, whatever you're going to do. It's, 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 it's terrifying because you get it wrong. I mean, it's not as terrifying as not having Kubernetes, right? Because if you, unless you have like one or two nodes, like machines out there that have really a high number of CPUs that get used by a lot of things and then or else they have particular like GPU dependencies or something like that. So you have a couple computers in your net, which is the same problem you'd have if you didn't have Kubernetes. Right. People can't, can't run. You, you have to go, you have to like make time to upgrade all the other stuff. So does the control plane handle the API server? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. One of the, the, yeah. So that's, 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 uh, that's one of the major components of the control plane. Let me show you. So that, um, so we're kind of getting into the control plane now. So it's worth talking about. We've been talking about nodes, uh, up to now. Um, and I'll, I'll go show you that right now. So, um, where is it? No, we want Kubernetes uh, IO. I keep coming back to this uh, to this one specific page. Actually, let me go. For my 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 tutorial has it linked from the very top. Uh, lab. And um, Docker the hard way. Yeah. So this is the tutorial I've been making uh, and keeping up to date if you want to follow along with me. Uh, I'm a total noob with all this stuff, so I'm learning with you guys. But but there's a link here to, I think, which is one of the most important pages in all of the Kubernetes.io, um, even though I feel like it has some mistakes on it. And I actually called out the mistakes in my tutorial here. Here, no, that's not it. Um, here we go. No, 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 no. It's up there in this big rant, right? Where'd it go? Did I not commit it? Let's see. Controlplane.net overview. Flux containers. I haven't pushed it yet, probably. Oh, Kubernetes the hard way. Uh oh. I made some changes. I think I broke it. Uh critical store cubidium. Yeah, I didn't I didn't uh oopsie. Um let me let me just finish this. I got distracted. Um, creating. There's a diagram. If you can go find it on the components page, it'll tell you all the different components. But they're logical components. It doesn't tell you what they are in real specific terms. And that's the most annoying thing. So, shit. Um, damn it. I lost my... It's so hard making sense of their docs. 
Um, they know it's an issue too. I've, I've raised it before. So, which one is this? Um, no, back here. Okay, this is it. So, copy this. All right. Creating a cluster with Cubidium. So, this is not the document page. Um, Cubidium is the hard way. Uh, wait, do I have, does I not have that one? I thought I did. He's... I thought I had that. All right. Give me a sec here. Kubernetes is the hard way, which I would never recommend to anybody, especially after going through this. Um, hard way. There's mine. There's Kelsey's. I'm gonna I'm gonna link to it though for reference. His his is is dependent on Google Cloud and does a bunch of shit you would never actually do. Um, that it's completely unrelated to on-prem. So I yeah I'm not a, not a fan. I'm a fan of Kelsey, I'm just not a fan of that tutorial. Um, this lab is a spiral for. All right, so what am I missing? Um. Let me give me a second here. Uh, I, I could have swore I had a link to the to the components page. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Node components. Did I not link to it? Oh, we I supposed to have. Okay. Node components. Node components. Is that not here? Is that not here? Let me go check. Oh, no components. Overview. I'm trying to find the link so I can show you the diagram. On soccer, doxy. Uh, vocal status. No. Uh, something's not right. I don't know what I did, but I changed something. Because it's not... Create the Docker file. It's right after the list of all the components. Kubernetes the IO. Where are you? Hmm. Where did you go? Inspect. It seems like it's missing an entire section. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Well, let me just save this. Um, fuck. Commit. Read me. Uh, fix links. Uh, Git push. Reload. All right. So we still have our Kubernetes IO there. Right, just let me check the top again. All right. So this is better. So here's the Kubernetes the highway link. And here's the creating cluster uh, admin link. Good. So this is going to be the guiding thing on it. Um, but if we go down to, let me see if I can refine it again. Where are you, baby? Okay, there. This is a component page. All right, so this this is probably the most important overview page in all the docs. Uh, and it tells you the logical components and how they're broken down. There are other ways of demonstrating this. If you get to the Get Started page, they have you go through some scenarios that have different diagrams, and they're a little bit more up to date. But but this does give you some nice information. So, uh, so so this this is this is kind of where I got my head around. It doesn't tell you what the things are. So after a lot of effort, the one thing that this diagram could 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 have improved by, and I'm going to redo this diagram eventually. I've already got to start on one. Uh, here, you know, it's not up right now, but I've got to start on a new version of this diagram. It would actually, instead of having these hexagons or, or whatever, these octagon or whatever, it would actually have the type, the meta type of the thing that it is. So, for example, a cubelet, a cubelet is a running executable, and the cube proxy is running inside of the cubelet. 
the Q proxy is a pod or something that's running as a part of the cubelet, but it doesn't call it out because this is a logical diagram. So this is selling you the logical components. And that is confusing as fuck because I, I was like, well, what am I actually installing here? Right? So this here, this is a control, this is a, a cloud controller manager, which you only have if you have a cloud API involved with your cluster. So if you have like a hybrid cluster or something. And this, you asked a question about APIs. So you have one or more API uh, pods. And so the, the thing to keep in mind, we got looking into this, it was like, well, what is a controller manager? Oh, a controller manager is actually also a pod. etcd, however, is not a pod. etcd is an external standalone application that's been adopted in kind of like the mitochondria in a, in a cell. <laughs> you know, like it belongs inside of it. You can have it outside, inside of it. So, you know, the symbiotic relationship of when, once upon a time, a cell ate, you know, a thing that could do, you know, photosynthesis or whatever, and then it ate the mitochondria and put it in. Or if I got that right, I don't know. But same with the schedulers. So the schedulers are also pods. And you, you have to know what a pod is in order to understand what that is. You have to know what the Kubernetes resource is. But when you come into the thing, you're like looking at it logically. You say, okay, well, this is logically, this is the way you can think about it. But, but to an engineer like me, I'm like, okay, well, where the fuck is all this stuff? And how do I get it? And 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 that's that question has been really painful to answer. So that's why I'm making my own tutorial. Because I, I can't, I, I've been, I mean, I mean, I'm dumb. I just, but I, I, you know, <laughs> it makes me feel really stupid um, because, you know, I'm like, okay, because there's like so many different networks and everything. So let's go back to, this is the overall documentation for creating a cluster using kubeadm. Uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them. Sometimes your questions are helping me get my head around it even more. Um, but this Kubernetes school, so I really, really want to, I just want to talk about that. This is a pain in the ass. This is the single hardest part of doing all of this work is keeping all of the software updated. I mean, the whole point of Kubernetes is to remove you from that work, but it's still work because now instead of maintaining the software, your actual business software, now you're in maintain and versioning and all that, you're maintaining the versioning and security of the Kubernetes infrastructure of all of its pieces, of all of its components. So you're doing that in addition to maintaining this stuff from of the, all the applications that are deployed under Kubernetes. And this is actually one of the reasons people fucking hate it. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of traditional uh, admins who are like, why the fuck would you go through that hassle? And, 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 then, then, you know, and then it comes time for them to like, re, you know, we have a really powerful batch environment and it has nothing to do with Kubernetes. So all of this orchestration and stuff isn't always palatable to everybody. And I think it's going to get better. But honestly, I think I think it's still going to be a cluster fuck until they get they get the metal involved as well. Because if in, until you can actually literally have the OS and 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 the Kubelet and all of that stuff managed in the same way, then all this does is add an extra layer of work, honestly. I mean, it's really up to you to decide whether it's worth that work, but it, it it's it's annoying. So, uh, so the control plane is where the API server. So the control plane node is the machine, a special type of cluster. Yeah, we'll put it that way. Um, a control plane node is the machine where, and, and the really crazy thing is like, if you look at the cluster API, they create a cluster, it's called the management cluster, but you can't have the management cluster unless you have a Kubernetes cluster to run it in. So you have to run the management cluster inside of a cluster. So they have you use kind or some existing cluster. And then that cluster manages your, 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 your hardware that is containing the other clusters. So you have no less than four layers of cluster. <laughs> so, so the future is looking at a cluster as if it's a container. That's the future. The future is, we're starting to see this in the multi-cluster world where they're starting to look at an entire cluster as if it's this big monolithic uh, container. And you're going to say, okay, this cluster has got these tweaks uh, and it runs over here. This cluster is over here. So you're seeing people scale uh, laterally instead of vertically in their Kubernetes cluster. So you're getting multiple clusters and then each of those clusters has to be administered and they all, some clusters might be using, you know, different container engines. Some of them might be doing different, net, you know, they have different overall cluster rules about what runs there. So the ability to, to spin up, you know, cluster pretty quickly is, is really important, which is why I'm going through this, if we're going to stay with this. 
It's going to be interesting to see though, because there's 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 a lot of um, of uh, burnout happening right now, and and the industry, Wall Street Journal is writing about this. Uh, the industry is actually starting to detect that this whole entire thing might fail unless they can get people to buy into it. So, because they can't get people to train up, and they get you know ancient veterans who been doing stuff forever who can't get their heads around all the moving pieces in this. And then along comes DEF CON and blows the shit out of everything, you know, security wise. So I, it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be interesting. I don't know if it's going to go the way of, you know, FinTech, but we'll see. <laughs> Good. If you have plus upgrade to single control plane, keep it man. Keep it closer. And by the way, there are other ways to do container management and orchestration. Nomad doesn't do any of this that from HashiCorp. And there's a lot of people that are going to with something like Nomad, even though Nomad is missing a bunch of a bunch of really really important pieces, uh, such you know like microservices and stuff that they address. It can be it can be interesting to see. Anyway, if you have plans to upgrade a single control plane QBDM cluster to high availability, you should use control plane endpoint. Uh, if you have plans to upgrade to single control plane QBDM cluster to high availability, this is interesting. I haven't read that before. You should specify the control plane endpoint to share to set the shared endpoint for all control plane nodes. Such an endpoint can be either a DNS name or an IP address of a load balancer. Okay. All right. So this is that is such a pain in the ass. I happen to know what they're talking about there because we just went through that with our infrastructure cluster. So we're bringing bring up a cluster that's just for infrastructure systems and stuff like that. It's not part of our production HPA, HPC stuff, uh, nor dev. It, and we, when they say load balancer, they're not talking about a load balancer service within Kubernetes. They're talking about a hardware load balancer that's built into a router or something like that on your network. But that's not specified. That is like really fucking confusing. So, so... This paragraph I hear, I happen to know what it means now because I just went through this, but I would have no clue what they were talking about if I hadn't gone through it. So what they're saying is there is only, there can only be one way to talk. At the end of the day, Kubernetes is a big fucking API. It's just a big API that listens on port 5000 and everything talks to it. Everything, everything, all the nodes, all your, your QBDM people, people with workstations running kubectl, everybody talks to it. So, so the availability of that, that port and IP to be consistent is really, really, really important. This is the most important piece of the entire Kubernetes deployment. You can have 25 API servers out there that are all answering and doing things and they they're designed to be concurrent and everything but you have to you know you have to figure out how to do that so you can use dns round robin naming uh or you have an ip address of a load balancer and that's doing if you have an ip address of a load balancer now you're talking about a network device that actually does all the load balancing for you that then decides which of your ips in the api uh service uh, did load balancing so did i I actually, I actually, well, see, that's the hard part. So the, I, Istio does do load, but actually Istio is more about locking down uh, routes to applications and not so much about the load balancing, if that makes any sense. It does allow you to map different DNS names to it. I've been fighting with Istio for the last three months or Jupyter Hub. Um, but it's, 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 it's Istio is many things, right? <laughs> it's, it's. But but one of the main purposes of Istio is is mostly routing, mostly routing. So so you're you know and it does allow you to do different domains and stuff. But it's it's pretty much a big router. Uh, and but but when you go to Istio, Istio itself has to talk to, you know, a consistent DNS name or IP address in order to talk to the API for Kubernetes, and everything goes through that API. And that poor 5,000, that, that's the one thing that has to work. And so, so for the reason I know this is because we just set up an infrastructure cluster and we've decided not to put Istio on it. Right. So that just means that you're going to, we're going to be burning up uh, a lot more IP addresses. 
right? Because, I mean, you can assign IP addresses and DNS names and stuff like that um, to the different pieces. You, you can still, I mean, you can still do node ports, right? On the, on the pods running on the, uh, out there. And then they, they get mapped properly. And that all gets taken care of by Kubernetes if you don't want to use Istio at all. But that's actually one of the reasons I'm doing this is because the difference between Minikube and Kind when you're, when you're dealing with like just one-offs is that Minikube automatically does all the magic to port forward all of your node ports to the host machine. And it gives you a command to look it up. So you can actually go look it up and it'll tell you what port it is, 37 with 100, whatever it was, and then you can just go right to it. In Kind, it doesn't do that. When you, when you use Kind, you have to poke all your own holes and do your own routing. And that's, that sucks if you're using an application like JupyterHub that, that picks a different one every time. It's kind of like an ephemeral port, but now you don't know what it is. So now you can't hard code it into the, into the pod container spec or in the template and, and you're fucked. So Kind doesn't allow you to test things like JupyterHub. Because because it, it's got too many moving pieces. Jupyter Hub has you know a spawner and namespace that does its own networking and all kinds of stuff, and that stuff is too complex for Kind to to really handle. But Minikube actually does it pretty well because it just takes anything you know load balancer. When I say load balancer, I'm talking about resource Kubernetes resource load balancer. It'll take that thing and it'll remap it and everything. And it's really great because it just gives you a single point to go into and it just takes care of it. But but that magic, you know, is is mysterious and I don't know what it's doing and I need to know what it's doing if I'm not going to have another, you know, ARP storm or whatever. Um, so so this DNS name, so what they're saying, telling you is you need to have, if you're going to do, if you're going to do single, I'm not. Right now, everything's going to be on a single node. This is why I kept the stages that I have. The reason I'm doing the stages that I'm doing the way they're doing is because I, I want to start simply and then expand out. So the... And then I'll go through and I'll do the, the, the installation again using Docker. And I'll say, okay, now we have two control planes. We're going to simulate like, you know, multiple, multiple host machines have running control plane, multiple control nodes, they call them. Um, Apple added MagSafe to HDMI ports to MacBook Pro again after making us use dongles for five years. <laughs> they did. They actually added HDMI ports back. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a typical Apple. They also added back the escape key. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. They added back the escape key. They got ripped a new one for getting rid of that. I thought that was so funny. Um, so, uh, choose a pod, choose a pod network add-on and verify whether it requires any arguments to bypass the cube admin. Mean, choose a pod network add-on and verify whether it requires any arguments to be passed. To this is, shit documentation right here. Uh, I mean, come on. This is horrible. Depending on which 30 priority provides it is, we will need, you might you might need to set it, the pod network CIADR to provide a specific value. Installing a, installing a pod network add-on. We're not doing any fucking add-ons. Um, since option of QVDM tries to detect the container runtime on Linux by using a list of well-known domain socket paths, including uh, var run docker.sock, even though it says in the list in another page, that it only looks for Dr. Shim, which is a fucking lie. We know. We just completed it. Uh, the webcam 1080. <laughs> I don't mind 1080. Um, yeah. So to use different container runtime, uh, if there's a more than one installed provision, uh, that specify the Creo socket argument to kubate emit. God damn. This might be the reason that we couldn't get we couldn't get uh, container D to work. So See, installing a runtime. I already did that. Uh, unless otherwise specified, QVDM uses the network interface associated with the default gateway um, to set the advertised address for this particular control plane nodes API server. Uh, to use a different network interface, specify the API API server advertise address equals advertise address. Argument to QVDM init. To deploy an IPv6 cluster using IPv6 addressing, you must specify an IPv6 address. Oh my god. Um, so you don't have to have a pod network add on. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you do. I don't know why you would need a pod network add on. So that means that there is something extra we have to install that we don't have that it lied about. That, that kind of pisses me off actually. Um, it contains important information about networking setup and deployment order carefully before proceeding. <laughs> 
you must deploy a container network interface based pod network. Well, then I know you have to have a CNI. I've, is that what they're talking about? If that's what a pod network add-on, I know about CNI. I've heard it, but I didn't know the name. You have to have a CNI before anything will work. This I know, and you have to pick one. Yeah, personal Raspberry Pis, but got stuck on here. Yeah, you must deploy a container, a CNI-based pod network add-on, so that your pods can communicate with each other. Uh, cluster DNS, core DNS will not start up before a network is installed. So, it sounds like the first thing we need to install before we do kubeadm in it is we have to install a CNI. Uh, take care that your pod network must not overlap with any of the host networks. What's the difference? You are likely to see problems if there is any overlap. If you find a collision between your network's plugins preferred port, this is fucking insane. So this tells me that they want us to set up the network for all the pods. I thought QBDM did that. Oh my God. Uh, it's insane. Can it be a bridge network? Can they have visibility? Does that have to be locked off? This is this is insane. Oh my god! And you have to set up Arbok rules for it. Holy shit! No wonder nobody does this. <laughs> QBDM should be CNI agnostic, and the validation of CNI providers is out of scope. Yeah, we have to have a CNI. I have a feeling the next step is installing CNI, but it doesn't say that. Yep. Uh, this is fucking annoying as hell. It must deploy a container network interface, a CNI-based pod network add-on, so your pods can communicate with each other. Apparently, you have to do this before you even run QBDM the first time. Cluster DNS, Core DNS will not support it. So, Cluster Core DNS is now built into Kubernetes, apparently, when you run it. So, you don't have to install it, thank God. Um, it didn't used to be that way. Take care that your pod network must not overlap with any of the host networks. <sighs> this means you need to create a network just for your pods. Uh, I stood as a clear winner. No, I, this is the whole picking of a CNI thing has been, I've heard this chatter out there. And it's not, it's not real. It's not obvious at all. I, I could have swore. I just read something that said there's a new default CNI built in, but I don't think there is. I don't even think we're going to have to need to do a CNI. I think we're going to, in Docker, we may be able to cheat here and not even do one. Uh, container uh, plugins are a type of network plugin that adheres to the, to the, to the app C CNI specification. Um, that's, this is insane. I feel like this is why we were having network problems too. I don't know. Um, we use, uh, the, the we're using uh, Calico as our CNI. So, you know what? I'm going to go, where is the Kubernetes the hard way page? I want to see what he does. Because he, he, at least he'll help us with the steps. So he goes through all this other stuff. Um, there it goes. Yep. So Kubernetes the hardware gets you through bootstraps. Kubernetes they use ContainerD. We don't. We use DockerD. Uh, Core DNS. See, I you but see they do it in the wrong order. You got to install CNI first. Um, you got to do a CNI. Container network CNI. Yeah. Um. See, th apparently this is a CNI, the container network interface. Uh-huh. Uh, the project consists of a specific specification on libraries for writing plugins. So you have to have a CNI plug-in. I think CNI is built into it. Uh, specifically, this project contains the Go source code for library of integrated CNI. So, but you have to pick one. Yeah. You have to pick one. And if you go to the landscape, this is not... This is, oh my God, this is such a clusterfuck. Um, so you have to pick one. So there is, see, and I, there it is, a cloud native network. So this is the main, it's not even a mature project yet. Yeah, I never got around to it. 
Calico is the one that that was that we picked. I didn't pick it, but that's the one that they picked here. And and I feel like I might have to pick that. It does make me wonder what kind uses, what kind of minicube. Mi kind of minicube both use one. They have to have it. You can't even install it without it. So it makes me wonder what they do. Um, so we have, I, you know, the more I get into this, the more I realize how immature the whole stuff really is. I, I thought Kubernetes was like really solid and mature. It's really not. It's not. It's undergoing massive uh, evolution still. It's just the main pieces have kind of been settled down on. But stuff like this is is not settled down. I, it's not. People would disagree, I know, but so which CNI provider are we going to grab? You know, I mean, come on, we've got. And how would I even know if I were starting out? I would have no fucking idea which one to pick. So, so I'm going to pick Calico because reasons. Um. Choosing a CNI provider. You found a link to that? Ooh, that's nice. Choosing a stand for Kubernetes. I read this instead of tools under the umbrella, cloud native, yeah. Why use CNI? Kubernetes is the fault. All right, let's read this. Um, Kubernetes is the fault network provider. KubeNet is a simple network plugin that works with various cloud providers. KubeNet is a very basic network provider. And basic is good, but it does not have very many features. See, I don't think we need to do this. I think we can use Kubernetes because that's built in. I think you only want to do this the Calico thing and add it in if you if you're doing something bigger. Uh, let's let's confirm that by looking at Kelsey's tutorial first. So he has you provisioning all your certificates and he has you do your own certificate authority thing. We are not doing that. KubeADM now does that automatically internally. Unless you want to be in charge of your own CA and everything, you don't need to do that step. That's a hard that's a hard step. It's good to do that. We will do that, but stage one is not that. Stage one is to understand all the pieces fit together. Generating Kubernetes configuration files for authentication. No, we're not doing any of this. All of this stuff is handled by QBDM. Uh, generate a, a data encryption config and key. We're not doing that. Bootstraps the SCD cluster. I don't know why you would do that first. See, this is another thing too. etcd is now a part of the other stuff. I, I really think that this that this entire tutorial departs from the basics that are now included in Kubernetes. I really believe that now. I mean, we just proved it in many ways. So, you know, the CNI is not even covered here. Deploying the DNS cluster add-on. We're not going to do that. So, um, apply. See, no, see, this is this is actually adding. Core DNS. This is actually putting the DNS in. So that's a that's a Kubernetes resource, which is like way too early. We're not we're not going to do that yet. So bootstrap the Etsy cluster, bootstrap the Kubernetes control plane. So so at least they did control plane first, which is good. And so if we have the Kubernetes control plane across three compute instances, blah blah blah. Controller one, controller two. We did that. So the, this is again. I don't. I don't. I, I hate that he says that you're going to do a Tmux in parallel. It's so fucking stupid. I and that he uses wget. I can't believe he does that. But whatever. He's a great person. I just fuck. I hate this. I hate this. It makes me angry. Um. Install so Kubernetes binaries. Uh. Like what even is this? Why are these like? Why are these quoted? It just doesn't make any fucking sense. Um. I think he like cut this out of his Ansible thing or whatever. So Cube API server, Cube controller manager, Cube schedule, and Cube CTL. Okay, I think we just got an answer for us here or there. Now, see, there's the thing too. You see what he's doing? You see how he's W getting all this shit? That is not the standard way to install it. No, you shouldn't be W getting shit. Honestly, people, you should be using the documented Kubernetes like packages if you're on Ubuntu. He's doing this, I think, because he doesn't want to have to go through that thing. But he, it, other, if you've got a fucking package manager, why are you not using it? I, I honestly, I just, this just really annoys me, because I like this is he's grabbing binaries directly. 
and he's not checked something or anything, even though it's over HTTPS, apparently. I just, I fucking hate this tutorial. Okay, but let's just get past that and get to what they're doing. So he's moving all of these new, new executables to the bin directory. So that actually gives us uh, an idea of what we need to have. Um, and I have a feeling that all of these things have already been installed for us. I don't think we need to do that now. I think when we did QADM, they installed them automatically. But I don't know. We're going to go find out. So Cube Controller Manager, uh, Cube API Server. Uh, this is also something else for the first time ever. I have now realized that these are actually binaries. And they're not logical. So what I told you about the components being logical here was partially a lie, I suppose, because these are actual executable binaries that have to be installed. Cube Controller Manager is this piece here. Um, the Cube Scheduler is this binary here. etcd is its own runnable thing. So these are not pods. That was a lie. And I'm really glad I just figured that out. Uh, and the API server is also an executable. Um, because we just saw that these are all, these are all executables. That is like gold right there. That knowledge to me right there is absolute gold. That means every single one of these picture things here is an execute is an instance of a running executable that was a Go program. That is gold for me. All right, so configure the Kubernetes API server. Uh, make sure that that was that's huge. I gotta I have to really focus on that because that that is a big deal. Um, uh, configure the Kubernetes API server. Uh, the instance internal IP address will be used to advertise API servers. And internal IP equals curl with a flavor Google. I hate that it does this. So you have to actually go curl down the IP addresses and everything, and it doesn't give you any idea of what it is. And yet there's no scripting in this tutorial. Yeah, right. Um, so public address equal compute address is correct for the hard way. Yeah, create the API service public system unit file. No, we're not even going to use systemd. We're not, and you shouldn't have to use systemd. Um, they, this is telling you to create the API service yourself using systemd. I, I hope to God that we don't have to create our own API service. If we have to do that, that is like, that is just such bullshit. Uh, configure the Kubernetes control plane manager. Um, move into Kubernetes. Oh my God, this is unreasonable. This, you know what? This, this is this has got a hard coded dependency on systemd. So all of this stuff I'm going to have to redo using something that doesn't have systemd. Because I don't want the dependency on systemd, but I have a feeling like you ha you might have to have it. Uh, yeah, I got to go. I had to go too. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, see you. Uh, this is all. This is getting recorded. YouTube. If you want to come, jump in. The date timestamps are in there. Uh, Cube scheduler. Yeah, I, this is probably a good time for me to stop. I I feel like we made a lot of progress though. Um, I I actually probably need to go too, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep at this for a bit. Google Google Net with Log Balancer. So you have to install Nginx, basic web server to handle HTML checks. This actually this has to be, this has to be not only on the control plane. But this has to be installed on all of the nodes. Uh, the Google Network load balancer will be used to distribute traffic across all three API servers. So we have to do that. What is up with these parentheses here? I don't know what's up with that. CTL restart engine X enable. So this is actually going to get really hairy because we're going to have to install engine X and have it run these things. We might, we might, we might actually hit a wall using a container for this. I really hope that we don't, but I think we might, because we're gonna have to rethink how we do all the system control stuff for startup. I mean, this is the kind of thing you would do if you had an actual system. So there's only two ways for me to continue to use Docker for this stuff. One of them is that we create, uh, that we actually install system CTL into the node, the container node, the host node, and the host container. And if we do that, we actually have to set up mounting and we have to mount volumes from the underlying systems uh, 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 kernel files in, 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 in order to do it. And it's a pain in the ass, but it can be done. Minikube does it. Minikube has a system CTL. Now, if you do, 
If you do profile, let me see if I got anything running. So again, mini Minikube does it, but actually kind does it. So so K get pods. Let me let me let me let me bring up a kind cluster. Kind create cluster. I'm just gonna create a cluster with kind really quickly. So ensuring node image, it grabs the, the actual image. This is it uses a container, uh, a host container as well. Same way we're doing it, preparing nodes, and there's just one node. Writing configuration, starting a control plane. That's all the stuff that has to start up, and then um, and we should have a we should have a cluster after this. And this takes a long time though, and I think it has to do some network provisioning too. Yeah, there we go. Installing CNI. See that? We need to figure out what it does for that step for installing a CNI. This this is actually a really good summary of what we need to do. You need to get your nodes all ready. Put the basic stuff on there. Then you need to write the configurations onto each of the nodes. Start the control plane components, including etcd and API and controller manager and all that. And then you need to install the CNI on whatever that gets installed on. And the storage class. The storage class is scaring the shit out of me. That's all the persistent volume controls, uh, volume claims and everything. And I need to do that in order to understand it. But that's a long, I'm a long way from that, being able to do that. So writing, configuration, um, and preparing a node. So, so here's what I'm talking about. So now we got all these. Um, uh, wait, let's see here. K. K. Oh, right. K get pods dash a. Okay, get uh what is it, dash dash all? I forgot what it is. Is it get all? Yeah, there we go. So we have a customer IP. Um service Kubernetes. So we have a single service in Kubernetes that's mapped. And we can go to. But we can actually make pods and all kinds of stuff now. So Get nodes. Yeah, see, we just have the one node. Um, okay, get services. Yeah, then we have the one service. That's a Kubernetes service, which is this thing. Um, but what I was trying to say is that we have this is uh, uh, what we're we talking about. We were talking about the. Um, yeah, so system CTL. So you can actually SSH, I mean, you can not SSH, but you can you can connect to it. So you can go DPS, you can see it's here. So there's the kindness node, right? So you can actually connect right into it. You can exec into the kind control plane and and get a sense of what it would be like, what we were gonna, what our final version would be, right? And systemd, they have, see they install systemd on here. I have the feeling we're gonna have to install systemd to make, uh, this whole thing work because we can't put a, a service on here until we have a system be installed and so in order to use system D on inside of our docker controller we're going to have to do some special things but whatever those special things are kind has done it so we've already gotten past that on my linux vm one oh god <laughs> white screen of death <laughs> that's never fun huh um so so yeah, so we've got, you know, you got you got the system. What is it? Uh, is it service status? I forget what it is. System CTL, right? There we go. So okay, well there you go. So. This is all the stuff running on the control plane. I mean, this is what a system looks like that's running exactly what we're trying to make. So, in it dot scope, the C groups Docker. So, okay, I, this this is a, this is an important conclusion because this means I have to figure out how to install systemd in a container and make it work. And that is not a step I would do if I were go to sleep. See you, pardon. That is not a step I would have to do. If I were doing my own, if I were doing my own, if I were making it in hardware, systemd would come with the system. I wouldn't have to fuck with it. So one of the disadvantages of doing it with Docker versus 
this is we're going to have to take an extra step to make sure that we can install systemd in our containers and i don't know how to do that i, I read into it and it said that we had to do some extra extra volume mounting with our with our docker when we run it and that's going to be a pain in the ass but i'm going to want to go ahead and do that i might have to read the image yeah, uh, the image file for the for kindest, which is what kind does. So, so yeah, to get that to work. So, uh, it's been init system slice container service container D. So it's interesting. It is running container D, which is you know whether it's Docker or otherwise it uses it. It looks like they're just using container D. Yep. They're what else are they running? And running pause, yeah, those, that's all stuff that gets started. I don't know what pause is, but this is um, something to, they're, they're, that's one of the standard Kubernetes images. Uh, authentication, kubecon, it's a cube Kubernetes, authorization, cube config, it's a scheduler, so that's the scheduler, okay, cube scheduler. Uh, controller manager, which is a, a standalone program we now know. Allocate node CIDRs, yes, true. Uh, Okay, I'm just this, this is interesting. I gotta read through this. It tells you what the cluster CDR is, find address. Interesting. It got all the CAs and the certs have got to be all here. That's such a pain in the ass. <sighs> and there's the ABI server, advertise address, allow privilege true, um, authorize mode or noted R by client CA. Enable admin enable bootstrap token, NCD CA file, NCD cert file. I want to say that kubeadm helps with that stuff, but I don't know. Key file, NCD servers, and secure ports, kubelet client, key, kubelet preferred address, internal IP, external host name. God damn. It's like writing an operating system. It really is. Kubernetes is more complicated than an OS. It's almost easier to understand kernel modules than it is this. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Um, so we have the etcd stuff. This um, looks peers. This cluster kind control plane. HTTPS 2380. What is that? Key file with symmetrics. I'm just trying to get in, getting a sense of this. All right, custom namespace shib. Um. Okay. Kubernetes shim pause address run. We we you know what we're gonna have to have a system D in here for sure. Core DNS. Yep. Build image data domain config. I see the configure JSON. Core DNS. We're gonna have to run core DNS under system D as well. Yep. I didn't want to do that, but it's obvious that we're going to have to do it now. Um, Systemd journal D service. Hmm. Kubelet.conf. So it is running a kubelet. That's important. Bootstrap kubeconf. It's the it's a, uh, boots bootstrap kubelet.conf. So we're going to have to make create the configuration files. And then do all that. I wonder if how much Kubedium does on all of that. Yeah, that'd be really interesting to see. Um, yeah, well, anyway. So, kind remove cluster. Uh, is it delete? Yeah, we'll just get rid of the cluster right now because I don't want it to mess up my Docker PS stuff. All right, so... Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need to put all that on there. I'm just trying to decide what to do when. Um, when we ran kind, it told us what it needed to do. It said it it didn't do the CNI installation until later at the end. So the first thing it was doing was was configuring all the clusters. Um, it was configuring all the all the configuration data for QBDM. So I'll go back to creating this. So the next step is. Initializing your control plane node. A control plane node is a machine where the control planes run, including a CD. The API server uh, communicates with, yes. 
recommended. If you have plans to upgrade the single load control plane, QVDM closer to high availability, you should specify that we're not going to do that. Choose a pod networking network add-on and verify whether it, it requires any arguments to be to be passed to QBDM init. Depending on your third party provider, you should choose you choose. You might want to set the pod network CIDR to a provider specific value. So you're selling pod network add-on. I don't think we need to do this. I think KubeNet is installed by default. So is KubeNet Kubernetes installed CNI plugin by default? Um, customize the MTU with KubeNet. Every plugin comes with a few flavors. CNI plugins are here to the container network specification. Uh, Kubernetes CNI plugins, better programming. Uh, by default, Kubelet accesses those plugins from OpsCNI bin folder. As for all the Kubernetes network plugins, Calico is deployed as a daemon set on the cluster. As for all the Kubernetes network plugins, Calico is deployed as a daemon set on the cluster. The CNI network plugins listed above are installed by an init container within the daemon set. Shit. Well, no wonder. If, you, if, if this is true, then you have to have a working Kubernetes system before you can install the CNI. Because you can't have a daemon set until you have a Kubernetes cluster. So it's really important that we do the CNI last. No wonder kind does it last. I was about to do it first. That would be wrong. Because it says it's a daemon set. You can't have a daemon set until you have Kubernetes. Oh, God damn. So network plugins and Kubernetes come in many flavors. CNI plugins here in the container network. So we don't need to fuck with CNI at all. That 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 is a lie. That is a lie. We don't need to think about this at all. Uh, you might need to set this eventually, right? But we don't have that yet. Um, optional, since version 1.4, QVDM tries to detect container runtime. We don't need that. That's fine. Unless they specify QVDM knows, uses the network interface with the default gateway. That's fine. We don't need to change that. Run QVDM config. Kubernetes config images pull prior to Kubernetes init to verify connectivity to GCRA dot container image registry. Ooh, that's a good idea. Let's try that. That's a good idea. Kubernetes config images pull because we need pause in all of them. There's like a ton of images we have to get. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad I remember that. The controller manager, the scheduler, the proxy. Uh, these are all the standard images. Yeah. Core DNS. Those are all images now. See, this is the other thing I don't understand is, is Hightower has you installing these by copying and pasting them. He does. He has you like curling them down with wget into the bin directory. That is not a thing anybody does anymore. I don't know where, what's up with that. It's, it's, it uses images instead for that. The, the documentation in that is really cl fucked up. It's really old. I can't believe they haven't pulled it. This is what I'm trying to tell you. These are all the images. This is why I was confused when I looked at all the wget like schmod shit he was doing in here. Because it's like, you don't do that. I'm telling you, you don't do that. That stuff is all built in. These images then become pods that run these things. It's not some fucking thing that you put in the bin directory this is not a thing that anybody does anymore I, I this whole thing right here has got to be really fucking ancient you should never do that i'm telling you i unless i'm really really missing something here this is like an anti-pattern like a serious anti-pattern and you should be doing what i just did which is what's on the official documentation site that means you pull down the containers which then become pods which then run core DOS, and then you're not installing any of these extra things by yourself. These are these are getting installed. They are runnable executables that are encapsulated in from scratch containers that are maintained by the Kubernetes project. You do not fucking w get them and stick them in user bin. This is false. This is really bad. And and I nobody knows it. And that's like the number one tutorial everybody sends out to everybody. Okay, I you know I whatever I, I think I need to stop because I'm getting kind of pissed off because it's so hard to navigate 
what's real and what's true now and and this is a this is this is this is this, is, this just makes me frustrated i love this technology but it should not be this bad i'm really glad that this, this okay so let me let's stay with the positive things okay let's go back and i'm going to go to the steps here um am i on steps here all right so i'm going to go to the steps because we did actually get one step further into the process okay so we um okay uh uh okay let's see before before we begin installing everything for the control plane um let's uh first uh check that uh we can get all the uh uh dependent images i think yeah i'm not just yeah um to to do cube adm okay i'm going to put another huge warning uh, I have to put a huge, huge, huge warning. Um, the um, tutorial. Um, not only does it completely ignore the the fact that we have added the official um kubernetes uh package archive from which we should be doing apt install for things but it completely ignores the fact that these binaries are now contained within uh, containers that run um, and, and instead of as uh, binaries. Um, this uh, shows how out of date that tutorial has become. I could have that wrong. If I have that wrong, I want someone to give me it, give it to me. You lay it on me. Tell me why I'm full of shit. Because if I am full of shit, I will own it because I'm a noob. But right now, I cannot believe people are recommending that tutorial to anybody. Uh, it has got so the fact that it's just w getting shit is just so fucking out of bounds i can't even stand it um no decent engineer would ever do that <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry to say it that way but that's just the way it is it, you know w getting shit into your user local bin and calling it the hard way when you have a totally legitimate and perfect apt repository that you could have added to your source list and done proper apt installation is just a fucking system administration clusterfuck of a nightmare and it's wrong and if you follow this you could get fired for doing this shit on the job I i'm serious I, I have been around a long time and i cannot believe that people are telling other people to install production software in a tutorial using wget and copy 
as opposed to using the available packages. I got to go to bed. This is just really triggering me. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I can't, I can't deal. Okay. So I'm going to add this back um, and we'll take a look at this. In fact, it kind of scares me. This, this entire process is really fucking terrifying me for the future of Kubernetes in general. Because it, because if this is the authoritative source for doing this installation, this is what thing the culturally this is what everybody is recommending. And if if this if these are the practices and they don't they can't get a, a complete handle on how to even install a fucking cluster in an easy way, if, if this is the state of the industry right now, then I'm very very quickly getting jaded about being able to help other people come into this and do it. And the reason that I think that nobody can find anything is because all the cloud providers are making gobs and gobs of money by just sending turnkey solutions. And then they're just doing it all on their own. And you're saying, why are you doing your own? You're dumb. Why don't you go buy it from Amazon or Google? And if that's true, if that's true, if the cloud foundation, the cloud native foundation is promoting the cause and the, the bottom line profit of these big providers because they make it easier for everybody instead of facilitating on-prem installations through, I don't know, basic fucking documentation that I don't want anything to do with it. And I will change careers. That's where I'm at right now. I'm so pissed off because this is, this is, this is completely unacceptable. This isn't even, this isn't even junior level system administration right here. So yeah, if, if this is, if this is what the whole entire thing is built on, if that if that perpetuates through the rest of this experience and I keep discovering this, then there's just gonna be too much technical debt for me to get behind it. And, but at least I'll be able to say so with a very objective position and having documented the whole thing. And I won't be able to just throw it all out and say, ah, Kubernetes is too complicated, it's a bunch of shit. I'll have a lot of objective evidence documented to be able to say why my position is as it is on Kubernetes. Because this is this is just not acceptable. So, um, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go through the whole thing and we're going to make it happen. Uh, all right. So first of all, let's do this. I just need to add, um, uh, add links and uh, uh, cube ADM config pull images. All right. So let's do that. Git pull. Um, so git pull. status get push so we got our last one there uh i'm gonna go ahead with that rant i'm sorry uh i usually start on the good mood and then I, by the end of four hours i kind of lose it um and uh, again it's not about the people it's about it, it's about the tech and and i don't care who made the tech i'm just talking about you know problems with the tech so far that i'm seeing um and me and my ability to take rocket and i'm a smart guy and you know, this is insane. The thing that I'm finding too is that I, I, I keep finding this. I'm gonna I'm gonna end with this in case you're out there and you're watching this going, you know what? That was my experience. I've had just today, I've had at least three people tell me this is where I gave up. Think about that for a second. How many other extremely intelligent and experienced administrators who have prided themselves on figuring anything and everything out have quietly and silently put Kubernetes aside and said, fuck it. Without ever going further. And I would suggest that knowing the culture of our, of our IT group, that there are a lot of administrators who have run into this crap, who have experienced this. And, and the problem is, is that they don't share the frustrations because they've prided themselves on knowing everything and being smart. So they, they don't, they don't tell other people, their frustrations. And on this stream, I've had several of them anonymously come forward and say, this is where I gave up. This is where I gave up. This is where I gave up. And I don't want people to give up. I want this technology to proceed. I think the ideas behind it are solid, but I want it to proceed. I think what's happening is that a lot of really experienced, even gray beards are, are saying, no, I'm done. And they're, and they're giving up on it. So, so that's all. And, and I'm going to say about that, if it, if it, if it turns out to be that I'm the one who's just dumb and doesn't know and can't figure it out, fine. But, you know, the, if you want to have this, this technology take off, then you're going to have to lower the bar for entry. And that means not telling them to go use some cloud service. 
And it definitely means don't telling him to use W get. <laughs> all right. So I'm done. Uh, have a great night, everybody. Um, this video will be up and posted just like all the others. Uh, I'm going to put the music back on and go to bed. Take care. I might play a Dota game while I wait for the upload.